see a message pop Hello up. Hello, everyone. On the yeah, I'm, I'm only audio because I'm uh, driving my son to practice. Yeah, we don't have. All right, let's see. So we are Deb, D, Philip, <clears throat> me. I was like, there's somebody else here in the group. It's me. Um, so that's a quorum, correct? Um, so I will call this. Oh man, it's six o'clock. Look at us go. I will call this meeting to order at six o'clock. Um, and Deb, we can hear you. You can hear us, correct? Yes, I can. Okay, here comes Miss Pat. Miss Pat, can you hear us? Jennifer uh, Freke is in the attendees section. Miss Pat, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, hello, I'm just making sure everybody can hear each other. Dee, can you hear us? Yes. Perfect, and we can hear you. Philip, can you hear us? Yes. All right, we can hear you. And Freke, Dr. Freke, are you there? Um, I'm here, and okay. I'm in a car, so my video is off. All right, two out of six are in a car on audio only. Um, but we are all here, and the meeting has been called to order, um, so I have to do the thing. All right, <laughs> excuse me. I feel like it's been a while. Um, this is a meeting of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so that is that portion of things. So the agenda review that we welcomed, we will do announcements, um, approval of minutes, public comment, then member reports, um, then we'll go on to action and discussion items to include CRESS and DEI update, the Youth Empowerment Center listening sessions, a CSSJC email address, a post update, um, child and elder care stipends, ARPA distribution and town council stipends, then any upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules and other topics not reasonably anticipated within 48 hours. Um, does anyone have any announcements? Uh -uh. I actually wanted to say something. I had the fortune to attend the Human Rights Committee in Town's um, Martin Luther King reading in earlier this month. And I actually wanted to read a passage from the speech that was read, if that's okay with everybody. Um, okay. I know there that though, ugh, I'm gonna start over. I know that there are those that are saying to the individuals who are involved in the freedom struggle, slow up for a while, you're pushing things too fast. Or they may say, adopt a policy of moderation. Well, if moderation means moving on toward the goal of justice with wise restraint and calm reasonableness, then moderation is a great virtue which all men of goodwill must seek to achieve during this tense period of transition. But if moderation means slowing up in the move for freedom, capitulating to the undemocratic practices of the guardians of a deadening status quo, the moderation is a tragic vice which all men of goodwill must condemn. Um, and I just wanted, that passage really struck me and the work that we've been doing, I think. So I just wanted to share with you and the members of the community that are here. Thank so you. My announcement. Does anybody else have any other announcements? Thank you, Allegra, for reading that, yes. 
it's not, uh, how do you raise your hand? Oh, I see it. Okay, hold on. Yes, Ms. Pat. <laughs> so, you know, it's all good. Um, just want to thank uh, Human Rights Commission and our town officials that has been busy putting events together from Kwanzaa to uh, MLK event, all that stuff. So thank you guys. Uh, a resident sent me a YouTube uh, meeting, committee meeting, one of our town's committee meeting personnel, committee meeting, and I, I watched it. I'm like, wow, um, as an employer myself, you know, I found the meeting very helpful. And um, there are so many, you know, quality, good, good things happening in our town that some of us have not paid attention to. So when I listened to, this is the meeting that they had this month, January 18th. And they were talking about looking into um, salary scale for our town employees. And as employer myself is something that I struggle with. So I'm like, oh, so that's how municipalities do it, like every 10 years or something like that. So I was very intrigued, just want to share that. And that made me think like, I also heard that in our town, you know, do hold annual um, town, uh, annual staff, uh, staff annual meeting, which is great. And that made me to think like, you know, it may, not, it may not be this year, but it would, wouldn't it be, be fun to have all the town committees once a year through Zoom or whatever, each committee like present their accomplishments, um, their challenges, what they're working towards, like um, who, kn who knows what people can learn from, from one another and, and residents are, you know, as well. You know, it's easy for people to go check out, you know, town council meetings and everything, but, uh, but uh, other good stuff happening in our town that that is a way to like, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I thought, you know, I found that meeting really nice. And it was very relaxed. It wasn't like very, you know, formal or anything. So I really like who was running the chair. It, it was um, uh, the chair who was running the meeting it was more like you're in your kitchen table talking. So yeah, I loved it. I just wanted to share that. Well, thank you, Pat. And thank you, Ms. Mill, Lauren Mills. She forwarded it to me. <clears throat> That's it. Um, any other announcements? <laughs> There is a DEI event this weekend, the Lunar New Year celebration, is that correct? Yep, that's a Human Rights Commission Lunar New Year celebration. It's very exciting, it's our first in person. Ooh, there's an echo. Um, so we will have um, Dr. Lily So will come and explain the history of Lunar New Year um, as well, you know, and the traditions and how families celebrate. And then we will have a lunch that's provided by Formosa, Fresh Side, Ginger Garden. So very excited and very happy and thankful for them contributing. Um, and then we have a group coming from Hartford, Connecticut, their name is East Culture Arts. And so they will do a variety of performances that are usually done during the Lunar New Year celebration. So very, very excited. It's at the Amherst Regional Middle School. Okay. This way we don't have to worry about space and stuff And what like time that. does that start? Mm -hmm. It's at 11, a, starts at 11.30 and it ends at two. Okay. Cool, great. Thank you for that, Jen and Allegra, for pointing that out. I should have been the one to say that. <laughs> but we do also have um, a flag raising ceremony on the first for Black History Month as well. And that'll be at the town flag at 6 p.m., Jen. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Um, shall we move on to the minutes? 
So do we um, want to put the minutes up for folks to be reminded? Hopefully they read them. And I know the two driving, uh, they can't see them necessarily. <laughs> Please drive safely. But um, I'll go ahead and share the minutes if you want me to, Allegra. Sure. OK, let me get to the top here. I'm just wondering if there are any like glaring oh. things people have um, to say about them or if people generally are, if they have read them, if they're generally in agreement with them or if we wanna, I mean. Right, Jennifer, you know. can I share screen? It says, I need, permission or what have you. Yes, sorry. Let me just um, make okay, you guys so John, I'm wondering, should we just table it to the end of the meeting or do we know if Deborah and Freke <clears throat> will be back or they're driving? Yeah, I'm driving. I won't, I won't be back. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay. No. What about Freke? What about Freke? Well, we can table it. I was just asking if we should do the minutes later in for our agenda rather than now. Um, I might still be driving. Actually, I'm feeling my okay. time gotcha. right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So either we could go with Allegra's suggestion if there aren't any, you know, again, we're assuming folks read them, uh, if there aren't any glaring issues, we can improve them or we could simply table them. Um, I'm afraid to table them for the next meeting because the mm -hmm. next meeting's out there, but um, I guess it's whatever the consensus. I mean, I read the minutes that were just you know, some few corrections, they're not major. Um, I actually highlighted them, but I have no idea how to share it, <laughs> but it's okay. It's nothing major, just, yeah. Ms. Pat, are they grammatical quite like? Yeah, modern, questions? yeah. Oh. Yeah, it seems more like, um, I mean, it seems to me more like, um, dictation from what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Like I speak very fast and yeah, some of the words it didn't come out. Yeah. But overall, I didn't see anything that is glaring to me. And thank you to um, our administrators that put the minutes together. I know it's not an easy task. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Dee, do you have any huge like content areas that you think we need to discuss or would you no no i i actually uh would want to move to approve the minute so okay. oh hold on so um can we just go to chris um i think i was quoted and i don't remember making that comment okay under november 9th the one that stayed um that has to do with, um, I don't know if it's scheduling or something like it, um, training or something like that. It's not a bad thing, but actually I don't want to take credit for something I didn't say. Um, it's not a bad thing, but just to move it, it's what the uh, Mr. Miller had mentioned, but I didn't mention it. Um, oh my goodness, this goes, um, Okay, where it says Ms. Pat Onunabaku suggested that the CSSJC write a report? No, no. Okay, not that. It, that was it has to do with what Mr. Miller has shared with us, but it came on down, it came up like I said it when I didn't. So um, it's okay. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so here in the, the one for December, Miss Pat, the police and fire department does not shut down. What would Crest shut down? Yeah, what would, yeah, also concerned about the mental health that Crest is using? Yes. Okay. Is it that one? Oh, okay. Yeah, keep, no, 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 keep reading. Uh, okay, so Crest. Okay, so 
Chris okay. put out an RSP for mental health agencies and they selected from those that responded. I did not say that. That's the only thing. Oh. Does that make sense? The last sentence. Yes, I see that. So yeah. how, how are Sorry. you suggesting to be corrected? I think Mr. Miller has shared that with us. It's not a bad thing. It's just, I don't want to take credit for what I didn't say. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, so you're saying strike that out. I just no. want the correction to make. The correction is so, Mr. Miller is here. Why don't you help me yeah. out here? I can say, so it's the Crest put out an RFP for mental health. All of that should be under my name. Exactly. Um, I said that. And I'll yeah. just say it was an RFQ. Uh, I will not bore you with the specifics of uh, state of town contracting, but RFQ is a request for a quote. Right. Um, request RFP is a different process. So, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so Jennifer, you have that, so you could make that correction, please. Yeah. And then my only question or suggestion in the next, um, the next portion that is quoting Earl, um, it's Wildflower Alliance, not Wildfire, just um, so that we're attributing properly to the groups that absolutely and i i actually i thought i saw jennifer shell's name there and i thought it was misspelled so if i'll look at that as well okay and so every time rfp appears it should be rfq so yeah go ahead other stuff i can live with it we can yeah and that's how i, have, I thought <laughs> it's like okay these are you know gross errors they're you know so I guess if we could just ask that before the minutes be finalized, like I'm looking under DEI department, there's like a six in the middle of the word yeah. that, uh -huh. so like yes. spell check yes. could be run or something just like- Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I had like, you know, highlighted yellow, 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 nothing major, maybe like eight or 10 of them. So Ms. Moisten, is that okay if we move to approve the minutes um, with the suggestions that were just amended? Yes. Okay. Um, so I uh, make no, the motion. You can't, you can't make the motion. I can't make a motion. No, so <laughs> <laughs> you are the, you know, serving as chair today. So um, maybe I can move. Um, I move that we accept the minutes um pending those edits to be made for um well this is for the december minutes unless we are going to approve all minutes together so i just want to make sure this is a correct motion to be made people um we had november and december i think november was fine i think november we had discussed at the last me meeting yes. right and so All right. Correct. So yep. I will go ahead and, and make that motion. I move that we approve November and December 2022 minutes pending those edits to be made um, prior to posting. I'll second it. Great. Um, Allegra? Um, I'll, uh, so all I in favor call the vote now um, yeah all right uh d yes okay uh miss pat yes philip yes uh dr freke yes deb yes and i'm a yes so that is six Yes, zero no's, zero abstentions, it passes. Awesome. Um, so now we are moving on to our first public comment period. There are, th ah, where did the button go? <laughs> Sorry. Um, there are three attendees in the audience. If there's anyone who would like to make a public comment now, please raise your hand. Otherwise, there will be another opportunity at the end of the meeting. I am seeing no hands. 
Oh, I'm seeing one hand. It's from it's, just, it's, no. it's, it's Jen. <laughs> I just I just wanted to um no, do you want me to put two public comments? Like the AHRA has two public comments on their agenda. I'm happy to do that for you guys. Um, so, but I, I would, it would be good if we moved forward with the two public comments on the agenda. Yes, I think that's a good idea. I think it's been our informal practice, but it should probably be formal <laughs> since we are a very formal. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're on to member reports. Yes. Any member reports? Maybe you got it all in announcements. Right. I guess I just also wanted to say that uh, I was able to attend the Day of Racial Healing event at the Survival Center that was facilitated by Cress, and it was a very lovely evening and I'm glad that the community is coming together in those sorts of discussions. And it was nice to meet some of the Crest responders. Any other reports? All right. Then let's move along to the CRESS and DEI updates first. Um, I suppose we can hear from Earl first. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, I was actually not going to be here till for a couple months, but you all mm -hmm. told me if I needed help to come to you, I need help. So I wanted to come to you. So I have one thing. It's just kind of a statement of fact that I, I, I want you all to be aware of. Um, and then two kind of requests for some support. So um, starting with just a kind of statement of fact, um, we're busy. Um, we're working with a lot of really kind of complicated families in town. We have reached a, and, and individuals, uh, anybody who crosses our path. Um, I just want to acknowledge we haven't had to say no to anyone yet. Um, and we are, that is likely in our future, that just with the capacity of people we have, we are not going to be able to take on the kind of um, very, very large needs of everyone in town. And we are going to try to do that as artfully as we can. We are going to really do our best to use harm reduction principles to prioritize folks who um, are not historically well served by other institutions, but just we haven't yet kind of in Cress's kind of live period, um, had to meter out services. Um, and I expect that hopefully it won't be for a lengthy period, um, but at some point this week, we are gonna hit the kind of actual capacity of people we can provide ongoing supports to with the 10 people we have working for us. So, um, you know, I, I'm not here to say how that gets addressed and, and we will do our best to resolve it within our capacity to try to move some things as fast as we can along. Um, but I just, I, I don't feel good about it. And I do want to be open that that we are going to have to say, um, not necessarily no, but we, we will have to hold off on supporting some things just by the nature of our bandwidth. Um, so I just want to be honest with folks about that. Um, if, if anybody in the community has a, partic a particular person where they think they're not getting served, but there's a reason to prioritize them, we are always glad to hear that. We're glad to hear it from anyone who might have uh, information we don't have, because um, every bit of information helps us to really discern who needs us right now and who can wait a little bit. Um, so that is just a statement of fact. Given our current paradigm, that's where we are. Um, the two uh, asks are um, actually, I really need help um, with educating some folks, I think, in the larger community around why we exist. Um, particularly, we've had this issue with uh, homeless folks, um, houseless folks. I, I, I was homeless. I, for me, that experience was very much not having a home. So apologize if I use that language, but I, I use it from a place of having been there. Um, I think for folks who live in homes who have that support, it seems like everyone who is outdoors must be forced there. But for a number of folks in our town and everywhere you look, um, they have not been treated well by systems, uh, including shelter systems, uh, even well-meaning shelter systems. They have trauma in their past and they are resistant to shelters and support. Um, 
we have had some calls from folks where they've pointed someone out and it's been someone who has frankly declined our support. Um, we have made, we will continue to make approaches, but I recognize that part of what we were brought here to do was to not be coercive. Um, and I am guarding the doors against that, but it does mean that someone can decide that they don't want our support. They can decide that the streets feel the safest for them. Um, we will provide any harm reduction uh, opportunities we can for those folks. We've given hand warmers, foot warmers. We have, um, I know responders have, have um, found clothing for folks, uh, clean socks, boots. Um, but sometimes when folks are calling us, um, they're saying we need to get someone off of the street. And unless that person wants to get off the street, it is very far from our mission to force someone into a place they don't want to be. And I just think any help I can get kind of educating folks on that, that non-coercion was the point. Um, it's not a decision I made. Um, I read the reports that were prepared by the town before I took, came into this job. Non-coercion is written into every single one of them. Um, the idea that I'm here to support people, not force them. Um, and I don't think it's any ill-intentioned folks, but I think you've asked us to be different than what exists. And that is part of what being different from what exists is. So um, just... It, it, you know, even this, just having this platform to say that I think is helpful, but um, it's one of the things that I we're seeing more and more. Um, there is nobody outside right now who we haven't attempted to make uh, contact with, who we haven't approached. But I, I absolutely get why some people don't trust us. They don't trust the systems in place. And what I know is a lot of what we do looks like old school street social work. And that means that you know, we're here for when someone has the moment. And that moment hopefully is today. But if it's in 10 years, we intend to be here for them then. And part of that means that we cannot use force or coercion. There is no coming back from that. So that's my first ask. Um, certainly interested in hearing thoughts. The second one is, uh, I don't know if you all had considered any sort of event thing, but um, we're, we're coming up on my year in town. And I'd love to think about how we might do um, some sort of conversation with folks uh, around what Crest does. I'd love to have some aspirational conversations about what folks, you know, what the vision is five years down the road, 10 years down the road for folks. Um, and we haven't had much opportunity to that. We've been really go, go, going. And um, like Allegra said, that that event we were able to do with DEI was really helpful for my folks in realizing that, you know, Crest isn't something we dreamed up. This is us kind of keeping a promise that there was a vision for this before we came here. Um, and A, wanting to say, hey, we're here. We're, we're doing our best with it. But also to, to have feedback and to do that in a way that, um, you know, I, I know there are folks who who you have access to who aren't going to come into my office and talk about what's what's working or what's not. Um, so, I, I, I that is more of a uh, whenever you all want to think about it. But I would love to 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 have an event together to think about bringing folks in to even if it was just a, a kind of community conversation, us presenting on what we are doing and then allowing people to kind of vision with us. I'd really, um, I'd like to, I'd like to do something with you guys. I, I, we haven't had much of a chance to do that. I know we've all been pushing for a lot, but it feels like, you know, this is a good chance for us to collaborate. And to my last point, maybe help educate folks as to kind of, you know, we are in the large scale of the country, a pretty radical department. Um, we were intended to be uh, pretty, pretty radically different from what already exists. And, and how do we get folks to remember why? So those are that, sorry, uh, you guys told me to come if I had an ask. I've been mulling this thing over in the last month or two. And I thought um, you were the right folks to come have this conversation with. Yes, Dee. So I wanna say just, Personally, and as a resident, I appreciate you, Earl. Um, I appreciate the work that the, the folks in the community that you have trained to do um, this service on behalf of everyone. You know, I, I get emotional because I know how taxing and how um, difficult this work is and can be and it's you're right it's coming up on a year and and you're still asking for feedback you still want input from the community to make it better so i applaud you i applaud you uh for that um 
I have, I guess, from your request, I would like to work with you on that. You know, please. Um, I think that would be a very fruitful conversation. Uh, we get to hear, hopefully, from the residents uh, what they see, how they perceive what what it, the Cress is doing. Um, what maybe are some challenges, you know, how to, to do better. But um, I think that would be a, a very uh, important conversation. And I think the whole town should support that and make it, you know, not some half done event, but an, a, a really good quality event where people will feel safe and good and courageous to speak up about what they see um, going on that's that's positive. And like I said, what maybe they see as challenging or what they don't understand. Because I think maybe some of it is just simply what they don't understand. Like you say, people don't understand what type of services fully that you, are, you all are here to provide. So I think that would be a, a great uh, time to do that. So I'd love to, to help work on that project. Um, I have two concerns and, and it's, I, uh, it's, it involves Crest, but I'm not sure you can answer it. Um, so one is that I heard in town council that there is to be some type of study or audit of Cress. Um, and I'd like to know more about what that entails because my concern as a resident <laughs> and as someone who is, um, uh, you know, deeply wants Crest to succeed, does that audit mean, you know, somehow the, the bit of money that you all have, have, have been given, you know, to do all of the things, these broad reach of things that you're doing that somehow it's it's not going where it should be. And I'm like, well, no, they just need more money. But again, I, you know, understand that that I can answer are, this one. Yeah. So I, this that I just those are my concerns. Yes. Okay. So I can and then I have another yeah. question after that, but go ahead. So this is this is not uh an audit. This is um in the in both reports. We recognize that we in in that we needed a data evaluation tool that could be meaningful. This is really our goal is to have as close to live data available for the community as possible. Right. So these are the folks who are helping us to develop a system in which we can share data. Um, like ideally, you'll click on the Crest website, you'll see how many folks we've we've interacted with. Um, if you all get a chance, the Durham, North Carolina website is one that we think about a lot. They, their IT team is bigger than our department, so manage expectations oh, exactly. a little. But okay. but yeah, so they're helping us to build the dashboard. Also, um, how we can get data to really support our goals. What is Crest kind of, and what does the data say? As well as uh, to help us with um, getting grants to be able to put that data into a metric. Um, I, I you know I, I certainly hope that we're not going away. I, I am I am laying my roots down. My but folks we won't are laying. let that happen. Okay, so good, good, good. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. So no, this is a ultimately, I think, a really positive thing. Okay. Um, and we're, we want to build in those transparency measures that I know are absolutely necessary for us to build the trust in the community that we need to. Great. That is good to hear. I'd love to see the dashboard. That's good research. That's good data collection. And you're right. All of that can be used for grants, etc. Lastly, um, I saw that uh, the chamber has invited you and the DEI director to speak. Um, I I think that's positive, except, you know, my concern, I could see where the DEI director becomes a part of, you know, looking at equity and inclusivity within the business community, but I'm not sure how Crest, um, you know, becomes a part of that other than just part of a, a community conversation. And so this brings up a concern. I respect your time. I respect that you are a busy person trying to make um, this program, which is supposed to address alternatives to police doing mental health work and community work, okay? So this is my point. Why, you know, and I, I'm not to dictate whatever you to do with your time, right? That's not my job. But as a, as a resident, I'm like, why is this gentleman 
you know, who has this professional life doing that work that's really important going to speak to a business community? Unless it's about just community stuff. But when it's about inclusivity within the business, uh, within business and entrepreneurship, that I, I don't understand. So there's, you know, a disconnect. It's something not congruent. So, you know, when you're telling me that there's a the time, you don't have time for such and such, it's like, well, again, I'm not here to dictate how you spend your hours and those indeed may be off hours. It's just that I don't understand how that fits into the chamber and the bid when we have a black business association that seemed to me you know, and I know it's not your program, that that would have been the more likely representation to have in such a forum. I understand DEI is there because that's part of her job and that's part of the description. That to me is not part of your job description. So, you know, again, it may not be you to explain it, but I did want to, um, you know, publicly address this. Yeah, I'll tell you my policy on kind of being invited to talk at things. You know, we're very new in the community. I will not turn down an opportunity to speak to any group anywhere. And I've met with the, the Sunrise Youth, they sure. the lovely uh, groups across the political divide. Um, I'm not I'm not established enough to be discerning in who I go talk to. So um, I, I often find myself at things going, I don't know if they meant to invite me to this, but if I'm invited, I'll show up. I got you, Earl. Well, thank you for the and work. And that's for any group. Yep. Um, that actually might be a really good place, though, to go back to your point around, you know, not move, like people might not want to move off the streets. I, I think of a business community, and I think especially some of the bid models in larger cities, like the underlying purpose is like to quote unquote, clean up the streets and not have homelessness on display. Um, and I'm not saying that any members of our community in the business side of things are necessarily particularly saying like, let's clean up the streets, but that could be a logical place to start that conversation. Um, because you know there, there might be times when police are called because somebody is sitting outside of the store asking for money. Um, so, Again, it, it might present business owners with an opportunity to utilize a service differently, but also to understand that that service is not going to be coercive. So, yeah, that's that's my answer to this question is um, I uh, in this role, I will not serve any coercive. I will not be displacing homeless folks. I will not be uh, participating in folks ending up in the carceral system a back door or front door any of those things um that's the commitment and it would not be the first time that folks didn't quite understand what crest was and invited us to talk about things that were outside of the bailiwick um and those have sometimes been the most fruitful conversations um particularly for me um i i think we all owe it to ourselves to have a conversation about what it means to be a community that supports homeless folks um to to hold the kind of human suffering and indignity of of having your pain uh in the midst of a downtown area um so I, yeah i i will say that as publicly as possible um i i think that the folks who are out there have suffered incredible unimaginable trauma and the last thing that is helpful to them is to treat them discourteously or disrespectful i also would add um because this conversation is also packed in with the mental health one that people with mental health conditions are far more likely to be the victims of crime than the perpetrators all of the data tells us that everywhere you look um and so to treat mental illness as some sort of precursor to crime isn't just a disservice it is stigmatizing discriminatory and offensive to any sense of human rights or human decency so if anybody was trying to trick me they're going to get that same thing <laughs> thank you Earl. um i see jen had her hand up first then philip then miss pat yeah. oh and then also I, I i'd like to talk to Liz. oh and then deb deb do you yeah. want to go ahead um since you're driving and you're unmuted <laughs> okay okay well since i have a uh, internet right now might as well take the opportunity right um there's a couple of things, Earl, you know, again, um, I think we want to think about how do we increase the funding of CREST, because obviously that's what um, 
CSWG had tried to do back then was to kind of to increase the funding. We wanted to have more staff, people wanted to have more funding, but um, the town was not ready for that. And that's why you all don't have as many um, people because we wanted you all to have more. So, you, you know, you need to, to, to kind of figure that out so that you can bring it back to us so we can support you in getting it because we don't want people turned away. We don't want people turned away because of, you know, because of lack of capacity, because you all, you know, don't have the funding to hire more people or you don't have funding to have like an assistant director. You're, you're gonna need help. You see what I'm saying? You can't do it all and everything. So those are some of the things, you know, we'd like you to kind of really kind of think through and then um, and let us know how we can be supportive of that. And then in terms of uh, homeless, houseless um, folks, I mean, one of the things that you said, which I agree with everything you said, but one of the things that, that you said though too, is that obviously, and I don't even think it's just homeless, houseless folks, anyone that that there's a new group in town, like the responders, people don't know you all, all you know all that well yet right because you're new it's about building uh relationships and building support so i'm assuming that you all are going to continue to build support with a lot of the folks that are uh saying hey i don't want support i don't want resources right now but just to kind of continue building that relationship because like you said it might not be today but it might be in a year it might be in, in in two years that they might want more support whatever that support is i'm not saying it is to get off the street but it might be to have some other type of support like healthcare or something like that, that might be beneficial to someone who's homeless or, or houseless, right? So just kind of make um, that point. And then the last point in terms of your ask, I think we have it on the agenda in terms of listening sessions. Um, so for me, I'd be very much in support of, and I'm, I'm thinking our group, we need to, we have it on the agenda. I think it is time for us to put together some listening sessions um, to really kind of think through how is press doing, but also conversation, sharing information, education, but also getting some feedback, right? Um, to see how, you know, how uh, how we can improve too, in terms of the um, support and services that we're providing. Uh, Deb, uh, is it is right if I address those three points? Uh, all right. Um, so I would say the budget one, the piece that I can control yes, is- yes, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I drive safe. Um, the pieces that I can control are like grant funding. Um, we are aggressively pursuing grant funding. Um, we're, you know, we, strangely enough, we are very new, but we're already having other communities reach out about um, potential partnerships and support. Um, so we are doing the the piece that I control is applying. I can control is applying for grants and pursuing that money. Um, I can't make any comments about the rest of it, um, but we are aggressively pursuing funding opportunities. And frankly, I, I I'm I'm hopeful that we will we will get at least some of them. Um, but we are we are doing our best. Second one is absolutely. Um, we recognize that houseless folks. Um, require uh you know that different folks require different sorts of uh support i will say we've gotten dozens of people off of the streets um we have moved dozens of people in the shelter um we have actually physically moved people off off the streets or moved their things from storage into their home we have um it's something that we are skillful at i'll say uh sometimes in the midst of it i think it's hard to appreciate that there are less folks on the street than there were in the summer Right, it's more stark in winter, but there are less folks on the street uh, right now um, than there were this summer. Um, and for the folks who are there, it's absolutely going to take as long as it takes. And our commitment is to be supportive. Um, we've started leaving notes for folks, reminders that they can reach back out to us, that we're here whenever they're ready, um, and and trying to leverage other resources to to support folks. And that last one, I love listening sessions. The only the only thing I would encourage I would have like I, that I think about is uh, President Obama actually had this community conversation model that was largely abandoned for political reasons, but I love it. Um, it involves a presentation and a discussion at the front and then kind of using that information to lead some things. I would encourage folks to at least look at that kind of mechanism of doing it. I find the conversation is much more richer when people are having those conversations with each other um, and then kind of we're all pushing each other to be better. But I, I agree. I think it's, I don't ever think there's a bad time to listen to our community. Thank you so much, Deb. And I, I, so, I, I love your, uh, I, I love how much you, it, you clearly you care. One, one quick thing, yeah. And I think um, Dee already said that. I think we could, we could build that in collaboration with, with you because you, you want to, to have it. So I think whatever model, 
would work, I think, you know, we could just work on it together, you know, our group and, you know, with you all. So I think that would, that would be great. And in terms of what I'm saying, in terms of the budget is how we can support to make sure that the town gives you all more money. That's basically the bottom line. <laughs> is is what you all need, you know, sharing with us, you know, and I think all the data, right, having the dashboard, all of that is going to showcase that you all need more funding to be able to work and do it to full capacity. But thank you, and I'll, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you, Deb. Um. Oh, I just wanted to make comment about the event and having Earl at the chamber event. So that is really so that businesses can have a good understanding of what he does. I mean, part of it is 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 for um, inclusivity, but also so that the business community. Some people don't know that Cress is available and and whether or not when they could should call Crest versus when they should call the police as well. So it's, there is a reason that he's there. It's not so much that he doesn't belong there, but he's been asked to come so that they, so that he can highlight what he does and let the business community know when are good times to call him versus the police, because often the business owners call the police on folks quite often. And so it's to try to intervene in that space. Okay, thanks for clarifying that because it's not clear on the flyer. Thank you. Uh, Philip. Hi, everybody. Thank you. A um, couple points that I have is in terms of uh, busyness and not being able to respond to calls or the inevitable of that happening. I think keeping track of that in some type of capacity so that way when you are going under after grants or funding that can be said. And I think, um, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if I have to be so, uh, keep my mouth shut on this. I think I can see between the lines is that what we should do as a group or need to do as town residents is possibly put some pressure on our town council to get funding into Crest. So that way Earl's request can actually be heard and dealt with in a way that it needs to be dealt with. I mean, CSWG saw it way before anybody at this conversation happened and it didn't get funded fully. And I think we're seeing the repercussions of that. So I think we need to go to town council and say that, hey, look, this is the inevitable that's going to happen when you underfund something. And to fund it fully means to look at it at X, Y, and Z. And then the next point that I have is um, I think that you hit on something, Earl, that speaks to me, and I'll put on my Human Rights Commission hat just for a little bit, not too long, is that the human the human factor of um, the non-coerciveness of unhoused populations and dealing with them at the Survival Center on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I do. I think that that speaks volumes to the work that you are doing, and I appreciate that, and I think that, yes, the town and town residents, whoever uses Crest to deal with the unhoused populations needs to realize that some folks don't want to be in a home for whatever reason, and that's none of your business. And so whatever that is, and, you know, if you're just there to simply just talk to someone or whatever it is that you're doing, but you're not going to physically put them in a car and then physically put them in a home that they don't want to be in to begin with, that's, again, no one's business. So yes, I think that we can definitely do that, ask us to make sure that people understand Cress's role in that when possibly if the Human Rights Commission could help out with that. That would be something that we'd be open to as well. And then last is the um, your second request as to a kind of conversation or community conversation. I think that that's a great idea and would love to be a part of it. And again, last time putting on my Human Rights Commission hat here, think of the Human Rights Commission as well, because we probably will also love to sponsor that as well. Thank and you. To, uh, thank you so much, Philip. And to the first piece, we have been... Uh, at the beginning, much more cobbling together data, but we've been tracking from day one. And, you know, I, I think it's interesting because I've said this to you guys, I think before responders ever went into training, we are the slow approach. And I think there's some value in that. Um, we spent time with a family today that had some real intergenerational need. That took a fair amount of manpower to do. 
But I think there's value in us not rushing through these things. I think, you know, we are trying to prevent crises. We are trying to prevent folks ending up in bad situations. And our average call is, I would say, probably two hours, the amount of time it takes us to do something. But we are doing things like transporting refugee kids to school, taking vets in our community to the VA, making sure people get to de- to medical and dental appointments that are, are frankly life-saving. And if that requires a full day shift for us to address a permanent issue with a person, I would stand behind that time. And so I think when folks see the data, you may say there's some days where we have four teams and they're working with four families and that is taking their whole day. And that is because we are trying to address the root issue. And sometimes, you know, I I think with the families, like we had a call today from a refugee family that needs help getting their kid to preschool. That is going to require hours of support for a long time. But the fact that that kid is going to get to school is worth more than anything we could do. It's it's worth more than than. So I'm sorry, I'm on my soapbox. It's hard for me not to. Um, I love this thing. And I think that the more folks meet responders, we they do such a good job of the art of it. They do such a good job of sitting with someone in pain until they feel ready to move forward. And while that is not quick, um, that is how real change happens. And we have seen in just the the six, seven months we've been going, real change happen in people's lives. Um, And I get get emotional about it all the time. Thank you, Earl. It seems like Cress is really doing some great work and we're lucky to have... One one last thing. Uh, actually, the, there's uh, we've gotten some requests from some communities who are interested in speaking with community members in Amherst. Um, I I do not pretend to represent those profound conversations that happened before I got here. Um, so if folks have any interest in that, um, we may have folks from Florida and uh, communities kind of all across the country joining us this summer. And uh, we will we will make every effort to with you all with the Human Rights Commission publicize these opportunities because um, I think. It's it's one of the trickier parts of Crest. I think Amherst is one of the few spaces that didn't hire someone who was involved in the conversation to lead the group. Um, and I guess we'll all figure out if that was the right way to do it. But those communities actually are, they want something like Crest, but they need to figure out how to endure those conversations. Um, and remember, this died way more often than it succeeded um, in those conversations. So if folks have any interest in helping to help some of those groups orient to how do you make these sorts of uh, changes in a way that's possible, particularly in small towns where it's not billions of dollars in budget. Um, I'll have some opportunities for folks over the summer, but you all in particular, I think it would be great if those folks got to, to meet you all and ask questions. So to, for clarification, when you say over the summer, is there a um, some type of workshop, conference that's occurring or just folks will be coming by? Yeah, no, there's nothing like that. Most of the communities our size actually that are coming out are actually also college towns. So summer is actually when folks can get out. Um, there, I don't even know that they will all come up at the same time. We're, we're kind of working through that with some of our, our sister agencies and sister communities. Um, but I mean, they're really, you know, we have, uh, I would say there, there likely will be some regional overlap. Um, you'll, you may see some folks from Florida from different communities come up at the same time, but we have some folks from Canada who may come down. Um, so those folks will kind of get here when they can. But I, I will make sure to, to let you all know well in advance as soon as we get dates locked down. Uh, so it's not a surprise. Great, good to know. Okay. The idea, the idea is spreading. Miss Pat. Okay, so first off, I want to start off by saying, um, Mr. Mela, I really have uh, admire your leadership with the press program and how much you know your, you and your staff have done in the community. I know not everybody knows Crest, but you know, Crest is a new program and it's going to take a while. So please don't take it personal because I know that your group has been very visible and you guys have been doing some work. Thank you. And it's not just only a homeless population, even a group that uh, in a recent meeting, my group BBA, they didn't know, you know, what Chris is. You know, some, some, of my, some of our members did not know. So you're pretty new. And I thank you for your courage for coming to us and said, you know, this is where you need our help. 
and I'm volunteering myself, you know, whatever help you need, if it's one-on-one -on -one conversation or anything. So in terms of uh, personnel, Crest personnel, I'm not actually surprised. I was just waiting when it will, you know, when you'll come, you know, for that, because I don't think like 10, you know, personnel is enough for a huge department like yours. Like I can see assistant director doing more outreach as you're doing, but you're doing like two, three people's job, you know, um, definitely we need to support you in advocating for more funding for Crest. CSWG that I was part of knew this is going, it's not sustainable. It's a good program. You know, what can you say about it? It's a good program, funded. And uh, we're going to support you on that. In terms of um, doing an event, um, I wouldn't even necessarily call it um, evaluation or audit, but listening session, just, you know, you know, for people to express how they view Crest, you know, uh, what they would like to learn to be more interactive. Um, I'm, I'm all for that. So thank you. We're here to support you to be your partner and we're here to collaborate as well with you, regardless of what, you know, you've heard. Um, I don't think any of us that joined this group, we're here to cause any type of trouble or division, but, you know, we're here to improve our community. That's what we're here for. And thank you for reaching out to us. Yeah, I, thank you, Ms. Pat. I appreciate mm -hmm. you. Um, if there are any groups where it would make sense, like the BBA, I think it would absolutely make sense to sit down and, and walk them through what we can do, what we don't do, and kind of how they can reach out to us. Would love to meet with those folks. If there's a, a way we can, uh, you can connect me with those uh, those folks, I would love that. I obviously, I cannot speak to the budget. It is not something that I am able to do. So I don't want folks to take my silence. It's, uh, it's just not my my thing to do. I believe in Crest. Um, in, in in my dream world, there's a reason it's not my dream world because it would wreck the town. Um, <laughs> it, would, it would necessarily be the way to go. But I do I do think that Crest is something that is worth doing. Um, I think it is something that we are hearing. Uh, I spoke at the Mass Municipal Association uh, conference this weekend. I was on a panel. We had communities all around the Commonwealth who were watching what we're doing and interested. Um, I believe that this is an idea that that makes sense. And and my hope is that in 10 years, we're talking about the, the tough old days when how did we make it through this because we're somewhere better. Um, but uh, you know, I, whatever this I, I don't want folks to feel I know sometimes these can feel like, well, if we don't get more resources, if we get no more resources, we will continue to be as thoughtful and supportive and, and positive and, and, you know, we are proud to have the to represent the town. We are proud to be town employees. Um, if we get more resources, we'll do more. But if we don't, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm saying if we don't get more, we we will we will work as hard as we can every day, no matter what the circumstances are, because we 100% believe in the work. So um, I, I appreciate that you all have any any conversations as residents that make sense. But um, I, don't, I certainly don't want to make it seem like I'm saying we. We're doing our absolute best, and even in limited circumstances, I don't. We don't ever want to shortchange anybody. So I just, you know, I don't. I don't want those two conversations to get mixed up. Because, and and I, I obviously believe in you all. I I would not have brought these issues here if I didn't think you all were were with me and trying to make sure that we do this in a way that isn't just. You know, we talk a lot about Crest. At, we're building an institution, which means we don't take shortcuts. Um, we don't. You know, we we don't make. Uh, enemies of our friends. Uh, we and if you all you all have been supportive, um, and particularly as we're trying to figure out how do we say things to folks in Amherst that that makes sense and that that register historically and that folks can feel. Um, I will always come to you all, particularly with these issues. You've asked me to, and and I trust you all. You, you I appreciate today. I leave here with lots of I think helpful ideas and uh, a shared commitment on all of our parts to have some big conversations with our community. Um, and and I welcome the critical ones. Those are the ones we really want. Um, I, I want to be better, and and we are going to be better. So I appreciate all of your support and all of these things. And I hope you'll continue to think critically about how, you know, we could do better at things and how we could improve. Because because I we will. I have a quick quick comment to make. Thank you. So I want to clarify when I said my group BBA didn't 
know much about Crest. It's not just Crest alone. They didn't know much about CSWG. Some of them didn't know CSSJC. Some didn't even know we have new DEI department. So it would take a while for people to catch on is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I, I had a and really, nothing. yeah. I had a really so lovely. It's not, yeah, so, I, yeah, sorry. No, was, so was, it's not, yeah. it's not that my group, you know, needed Chris for help. It's just that they didn't know all these wonderful things happening in our town. So it's larger than Chris program, like, you know, our town, what are we doing to highlight all the good stuff? you know, that is happening in our town beside controversy. Like we need to balance this, you know, what I meant to say, you know, so that people will be aware of other good stuff happening that they're not aware of. People are too busy running their business or their life or studying school, whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I was just gonna say, I had a, a refugee mother who said to us the other week, she's like, I don't know about Crest. And we were like, oh, how could we have taught you? And she's like, who cares? I didn't know until I needed it. But when I needed it, you were here. And now I know about it. And that's the truth. That's reality of public safety. You know, people are going to meet us when they need us. And our responsibility is to be there and to be prepared and, and as helpful as we can when they need us. And I hope I hope a lot of folks don't get to know us because life is good and they don't they don't need to call on us. I, yeah. That, thank you for that. That context. I appreciate you. I just wanted to check in if Freke wanted to make any comments. I know he's driving, so probably can't raise a virtual hand, but. right now, but thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, I just, I guess I had one more follow-up and I just wanted to verify that you are now at like full extended hours, split shift type so, scheduling. Yeah. So our, our shifts right now are, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I will get a visual representation of this out, um, our Monday, uh, 8 a.m. to 10, to 4 p.m. Um, that's, uh, we only have, uh, so 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through uh, Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have two shifts uh, working across. And we're finding that evening work looks really different than the day work, which has been mm -hmm. nice. It's been nice for us to have some overlap because we have had some days where we've had to shift some of those day resources tonight. Things like if you go to a basketball game at the high school, you will see responders there um, supporting supporting everyone, meeting folks in the community. Um, and Saturday, we are in town from 10 a.m. Uh, to 6 p.m. Um, and uh, we haven't had much call in those hours because we've really we've used that to catch up on some of the the cases we've been working on. So we haven't publicized it much. We've been really using that. Um, but after this weekend, for folks who are in town and go to Winterfest, you will see our Saturday team there, um, and you will see those folks um, starting to show up to events and um, respond to things uh, as as called upon. Um, but really, we're, we're recognizing that we need to do a whole nother, like we just started on Saturday. So we are going to start doing engagement very heavy on those Saturdays. Um, uh, Rome uh, Cabrera, one of our responders, I just want to put a plug in, is working with some Amherst College students who are Spanish speaking for us to get some kind of culturally competent translation services for folks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's likely to be something that we start to do on Saturdays. We're also working with the school on their restorative justice process. Um, we want to use that as a day when there's some downtime to do community service projects. Um, and so to partner with the schools on that as they also have a community service uh, program. So um, really seeing, you know, Saturday is a new opportunity. Um, Sundays, we haven't seen the call volume to, to really reflect that we should be in town on Saturday, on Sundays. And it would mean pulling back some service on those weekdays where we are Tuesday through Friday, seeing really heavy use of our service through the whole shift. So kind of given where we are with folks, this is as extended as we can be for a little bit while making sure that folks are still able to access training, um, supervision and support. It's hard work. And I don't, I don't want to put anybody out on a limb without meaningful uh, contact with other folks. I have one question and I, it has to do with kind of that intersection with uh, students on other campuses um, and then the town. Has there been any discussion or shared information with uh, services on college campuses in the area, um, having a kind of parallel uh, group, perhaps? Yeah, so, so we're in touch with all of the, um, there are some, uh, Hampshire College, I would say, is the furthest along. Their public safety is unarmed, is largely folks who are not 
formerly working in police roles. Um, we've been, they actually were in some of our trainings with us okay. back in the summer. Um, Amherst College, actually, some of their public safety folks provided some training and we are, you know, kind of collaborating back and forth on now that we're stood up, what training can we offer? Mm -hmm. um, and partly because they're so close to office, we have Amherst College students walk in all the time. Um, UMass, we work closely, uh, we're part of the town gown things now. So um, really kind of in our context as much as possible working, you know, the students who live in town um, and and that has looked very differently. I would say we're not getting a lot of uh, our biggest call from you math students has been for quiet, safe place to study. Um, so if you were to check in on our conference room some evenings, you'll find some students in there uh, just kind of studying and feeling like that's a place where where they know they're going to be OK. And if they need anything, we're going to do our best for them. So um, we haven't gotten quite to the point where we're doing much over there, but a, uh, UMass PD has allowed us to go to some of their disaster preparedness events, which has been really help, helpful as we start to think about, you know, God forbid something bad happens in town, how, what role Crest has to serve in disaster relief. Um, and but not a request to like maybe look at what you all do and, and form uh, kind of parallel uh, service on the campus. I think folks are mostly watching us right now. I think we're still early enough that they're waiting to see if we survive the first year. If I was them, I would be. Um, we have had some student groups who've been interested in learning about Crest. Uh, in fact, at the conference I presented at in Boston, there were three UMass student, UMass Amherst students in, who, who came uh, to here there. I tried to tell them they could get that same information much closer to home. Um, but yeah, we're seeing, a lot, frankly, I would say similar to how Crest started at the beginning. We're there's student groups on each campus who've reached out um, wanting to know what we're doing and um, it's one of the reasons why we have taken in some interns is we want to make sure that as we're starting out that particularly for students who are uh, BIPOC or who have committed to social justice kind of in their framework that they get an opportunity um, to come see us as we're building this thing whether it works or not I, I recognize so uh, any students who want to intern I, I mean we'll we'll take you I don't know how how much um, how much we're going to be able to teach you as much as we can learn together. Um, but yeah, we have a clinical intern from BU who's from the town. We have a social justice intern uh, from UMass. Her name is Hannah Justice. I didn't make that up. She's got a good last name. Um, and we're now working uh, potentially with some uh, with UMass around getting some more placements, particularly for uh, BIPOC clinical students to make sure that they get the chance to see um, some high needs cases before they end up in the field where they're likely to see a lot of high needs cases. Thank so. you. Yeah, I know it's. I know Amherst. I know I gotta. I gotta figure out how to be a part of that teaching community. It's important. Right. I'm sorry for taking up so much of you all's time. No, Thank this you. Is no, 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 no. It's really good. informative. No. Been really yes. informative. Um, yeah. and so we appreciate it. A lot to catch up on. You know, since the the new year. Um, I'm just wondering, Allegra. Look at time. Should yeah. we move on? Uh, Jennifer, you're going to give the report for DEI. Yes. Okay, thank you, Earl. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so care. much. Thank you. So the DEI department has been really busy as well. Um, so the events that we've, or the things that we've been doing. So we also, with the HRC, um, had the Kwanzaa event, which was very successful. We had fabulous dancers that attended and it was well attended. We then had the um, MLK celebration that we worked in collaboration with the Human Rights Commission. We have completed the preliminary conversations with three civilian law enforcement board consultants and have provided the finance department with the draft RFP. We've provided facilitation trainings to the CRESS and the core equity team members who facilitate the staff and community National Day of Racial Healing events. So there was a staff one in the morning, and then there was one in the evening for the community members. Um, we are planning to have events bi-monthly and hopefully to have a co consultant come in during those off months that we're not having a racial a healing cell um, event that the consultant can have one so that people don't lose momentum, you know, that people are continue with the work. Um, we are now serving as a staff liaison to the Disability Access Advisory Committee. Um, we provided a presentation to Applewood Retirement Community for MLK holiday. We participated in support group for LGBTQIA members at an intergenerational event called Rainbow Cafe. We have um, 
so we did hold the two national day of, na the two events for national day of racial healing we are working with the human resources director who's new in planning and delivering professional development workshops for staff and review of the personal personnel manual we have also um and then Pamela had, was a panelist at the Northeast Government Executive Council meeting on strategic capital planning for municipalities, as well as we have and are starting to receive back from department heads the DEI self-assessment and survey that was sent out to the department heads. We also both participated in the Mass Municipal Association's annual conference and trade show, which is a weekend conference where we attend different sessions and seminars. That's it. I'm not months. as eloquent, eloquent about it as Earl, but that's that's what we've been doing. Busy, and so busy, we have busy. the upcoming events coming as well. Thank you. You guys have been very busy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Any I just so, I have question. Yeah, I do. I have question. So um, you mentioned that three civilian uh, something about rfp has gone out no the rfp has not gone out okay but there has been pamela's had conversations with three civilian law enforcement board consultants so okay. just to kind of understand the, what the different things would be needed for the resident oversight board and just trying to move forward with that okay so do we have timeline when they will get back to her well she's spoken with them and we okay. she's creating and working with the accounting department to create gotcha. the rfp so the rfp is gotcha. completed okay okay thank you um what this is deborah yep. can you hear me yep. yep we hear you okay so yeah um jennifer thank you so much yeah you all have been definitely very very busy um, thank you for all you all are doing. Uh, but along the same lines of, of what Ms. Pat was talking about, you know, I'm just really interested again on the oversight uh, board, the resident oversight board, um, you know, really thinking about that timeline in terms of putting it in place. I know that at, at one of those uh, contentious town council meetings, they, they had discussed the possibility of hiring a consultant so that that timeline could be moved up so that the oversight board could be put in place uh, sooner rather than later. Um, so do we have any movement on that in terms of where things stand, um, you know, any other conversations, that sort of thing? Um, and then also, um, I don't know if you all have, have, have had any more conversations. So I want to answer to that around the oversight board, but any other conversations with the police around the protocol in terms of them responding to young people or whether that's going to change and our responders are going to respond to young people, which obviously I'd prefer. Um, so what, what's, what's been some of the changes around that, given everything that, that happened, um, you know, between the police and the Amherst 9? Okay, so starting, okay, so starting yikes, with the first... The first with the first um, question, which was about the timeline. So as soon as the RFP is completed, which I believe that Pamela would like to have that done within before the end of the week, before the end of next week, because she too knows that it needs to be done. And uh, the sooner we can get the RFP out, the sooner we can begin the work. Um, and regards to the police and their, um, we, Pamela and I are working on, the only thing I can really say is that Pamela and I are working on uh, workshops for all the departments, including the police, because um, that would include the police. So somewhere in there will be how we how they respond to someone, but I don't have much more than that to say regarding the incident or and or. Um, what? Yeah, I guess I'd be more, more interested in finding out, like, what is this workshop? What are you all going to be focusing on? Is this going to be a continual type of conversation because a one and done is not going to do much, you know, um, it's going to have to be. And then also we had discussed about having a, the whole kind of town uh, conversation, right, with with when we had talked about doc, uh, Dr. Barbara Love and having a, you know, kind of a whole, you know, kind of conversation with the town and, and healing and so on and so forth. So 
Um, so for me, it has to be a continual conversation. Um, so I'm, I'd be interested in finding out more about what you all are planning to do, especially when it pertains to the police. Great. So, so the, the, you got to mute. mute. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I don't know what the why there's feedback when she's unmuted, but so um, the workshops we haven't finished compiling them yet. We're creating them yet, so those will be happening. And then uh, the racial healing. So I know that that Pamela has reached out to Dr. Barbara Love a few times, and so if you guys might have a better chance of getting a response from her, then that would be great if you did that, made that call um, on behalf of the DEI department. But the racial healing, the, nas the day of national, national day of racial healing event that occurred on the 17th was the very beginning of having community conversations. And so, as I said before, this is going to have, we, the DEI department will do it every other month. And we are hoping to hire consultants to do the off months that we are not holding the session ourselves so that the work is continuing and um, we are no training or workshop will be one and done I think that we are all aware that one and done does not work it's just a checkbox and the only way you're going to really get work done and get down to the where the problems lie is if you're continuously working with people and so we continue to do that throughout the town departments Okay, so so you're saying that then um, the whole racial healing, the national one that just happened with MLK was the, so I didn't, I wasn't clear on that. So so you're saying mm -hmm. that that was like the first kind of kickoff, and now you all are going to be having these kind of um, bi-monthly and a consultant and so on and so forth. So that's so that and that's going to be for the town. I mean, how is that being advertised? Are you all getting good? Because I, did, I didn't have that understanding. So are you all getting a lot of participants there? I mean, you know, what's the, the kind of the strategy around it? Because obviously it has to have people from all backgrounds, um, languages, there needs to be interpreters, there needs to be a lot of public, you know, propaganda, not propaganda, but advertisement around that it's happening. You know, what, because like I said, I didn't even know that that was what this was all about, you know what I'm saying? So if I didn't have that understanding, I'm, I know the town folks are not gonna have that understanding. So I guess, you know, what, what's the strategy in terms of getting the word out and, and what's the, 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 the short-term goal, the long-term goal? Okay, so um, we did do some, some advertisement the event was well attended. There were just, I'm, we had nine tables that had at least six plus people at them. So that makes over 50, we had basically over 50 people at the first event. And so one of the things that happens with stuff here, and as much as we did advertise, we advertised it through the schools, we advertised it, I sent everybody emails, we advertised it in the news, it was on our website. I know people don't like to hear the website because not everybody goes to the website, not everybody's linked to town, but it's also why we went through the schools, we advertised it through the survival center. I mean, we were pretty active in, in getting it out and I sent all of you guys an email with the information on it as well, which is another way that I've been trying to do it. But one of the things that sometimes happen, no different than community engagement, is you you know you're going to get a certain crowd of amount of people the first time but as the word gets out that this was something meaningful that this was good and that this was well attended then more and more people will come and start attending so we are moving forward with that i'm sorry if you didn't understand what the event was or had confusion in regards to the event but we are moving forward with that and part of it is going to be that some of it is going to have to build in addition to the way different ways that we advertise did that answer okay. everything? Yeah, and you all had like interpret, like you, did you all have people that- um, So we had child care uh, provided? No, we can't, no, I, I know. We, we had um, child care there. We did not have an interpreter there, but we did advertise that if things were needed that we, you know, not things, but if interpretation was needed, it could be um, provided. So we did have somebody who reached out about it, but then I, it, I, it was more of a sales pitch, I think. So I'm not sure how that turned out. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
All right, uh, Dee, then Pat, then. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so, you know, I'm glad that um, this is happening. I believe in doing uh, dialogue, um, you know, and it's good that there's a plan, even, you know, if it's not fully articulated or formalized that um, at least in, in the psyche of the residents as yet, um, maybe you all could do, you know, some, some work on that. Um, but that's a good, good start, right? I wanted to know, is this connected to the anti-racist work that was discussed in town council? Or is this another kind of campaign that the DEI is rolling out? And I just want some uh, clarification on that. Yep, I'm not. 100% in regards to the anti-racist statement that you were making, but I know that this is something that the DEI department is trying to do for multiple reasons, right, to get people talking about race and the differences and people learning how to accept and to listen and to move on, not move on, but to, you know. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was poorly worded. I didn't mean like move on like that. It's like okay. one of those things where I'm like, oh, it's recorded. Um, okay. But it's, it's okay. really to bring Amherst so that we can be a better place and more accepting of others and their differences, right? That's sure. that's the goal. So, okay. um, so that's what, so you're answering me here. So it's not part of the anti-racist motion passed and put forth by the town council this is part of a DEI campaign, you're saying? This is um, the recommendation that came from the CSWG that we do some racial healing work. So we are taking the recommendations from right. the CSWG and moving forward. Okay, I just wanted to know what it was attached to. So uh, thank you for clarifying that. I think, um, it could, and I'm glad it was well attended. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to go. I think doing things sometimes around, um, you know, the holiday break, uh, you get different audiences. Um, so, you know, looking forward to the next time uh, this occurs, but for, for people to kind of understand and maybe be motivated to engage, um, having that history, right? linked to the CSWG work as a continuation, there's another part of the community that might be more inclined to participate because they're understanding, yes, this is a good thing, but it's also connected to that work that the CSWG began, just like CRESS is connected to that work with the CSWG. So um, I think that would be a positive thing, a good thing to attach it historically and contextualize it. Um, as part of an overall campaign instead of a one-off type of thing. It's good to know, you know, if people are listening to this meeting, you know, or see it later in the minutes or what have you, hey, this is what the DEI department's doing and it's connected to such and such. But other than that, then yeah, it sometimes looks like this is going to be a one-off thing. And I'm, I'm glad to hear from you, Jennifer, that it's not that there's a whole plan that, um, to continue this work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Allegra, do you call on yourself, Allegra? Um, I will defer to Ms. Pat and Philip first. Okay, I'll be very quick. I didn't, I didn't plan to say this, but um, Jennifer, I thank you for clarifying this because the racial healing thing, I, you know, it was well advertised. I knew it was happening, but I wasn't sure how it, you know, you know how it came about. So thank you for clarifying that. So in terms of Dr. Love, I'm happy to reach out to her. Uh, does she need to reach out to Ms. Pamela through email or you know, work phone number? What is easier to reach her? Um, whichever is, is easiest for um, Dr. Dr. Love. Love. So okay. the phone number for the DEI department is 413-259-0360. And then you can, either one of us can be emailed to, okay. to get that conversation started. Okay, I'm going to harass her. Okay, we'll Thank do. You. Yeah. Philip, I'm done. 
Yeah, I just wanted to speak, um, having attended the event, Racial Healing event, I thought that it was very well done. Um, the conversation at the tables, the individual conversation was very insightful, very like getting to know one another. I sat with um, two individuals that I had not met. And so that was very good for me just to kind of have that conversation and around race and kind of in like a safe space environment. Like we all knew that we were coming to talk about it. And there was a collective understanding that, you know, racism exists because in some circles that has to be defined and all that. So it wasn't groundwork to be like, oh, this is one-on-one stuff. It's kind of like, how do we move about in town with it? So I really appreciated that. Um, and one feedback that I have, and um, I think I did share with you on that email, Jen, was that maybe having some um, BIPOC groups just to individually talk about that, because that conversation is different than having white people in the conversation as well. But um, in terms of child care, I thought that was a great idea. I think I thought that was like amazing. And we even had people that utilize it. And one individual um, told me that she wouldn't have came to the event unless it was at there. So I think very well done on that part. And then I do want to say that um, to the event, um, like conducted and all that, I, I thought it was amazingly done by Pamela. I thought she held it very well and at the event of course you have to be at the event to hear this but that she did say that it would be a bi-monthly event with hopefully the helps of the consultants um filling in when you all are not able to do so so that was just my overall feedback from attending the event so we were very purposeful in the, the in the location and the timing you know we made sure that the bus schedule matched up at the survival center with a time frame so people could you know, take the bus and then get home in a reasonable time because we all know what it's like when something happens and you want to do it and then the bus doesn't come back, right? That's that's not good. Um, we were very purposeful with the child care. We were very purposeful to make sure that people who came in together didn't sit at the same table. And we did that with the department head, with the um, staff one as well, because we didn't, we know like it just happens, you know, you sit with who you come in with, you sit with your friends, you sit with the people in your department, but we really wanted people to get out of their comfort zone a little bit. And so we did that by, you know, handing out everybody a number that was assigned to a different table. So we were very conscious about the, the ways that we approached the overall structure of the events, both for the community and for the staff. And then I did just want to add in there too, that I thought that, um, audience wise it, it obviously we always have room for more diverse audience but as in terms of people that came and attended it did seem like a diverse um population at that first event and then i do want to give some shout out to some town counselors that did come there was about four in attendance so i will i will give them that that they're doing the work there yeah and then divine had a great time doing child care right like he loved it <laughs> Um, I would echo all of Philip's comments and I do, um, I also had submitted feedback, but I think the idea of kind of the affinity groups might be helpful as well. Um, and it's nice to like, it, my comment originally was it might be nice to try and hold them at different times, like during, like throughout the day or like on a weekend, like during the daytime rather than at night, just to, because you can always kind of capture a different group at a different time of day. Um, but hearing the thoughtfulness and, you know, the work that went into looking at bus schedules and stuff, you know, that, that makes sense. Um, and that is, I think, a really important thing to take into consideration. Um, and so, you know, I'm always thinking like, how can we be even more supportive? So is there a way that transportation could be provided at some point, you know, in the future um, to these sessions or if the location would change, you know, so that there's a more, you know, maybe the bang center or something like that. And, you know, just different ways to make it accessible to, to all the community populations. Oh, absolutely. So infinity groups are on our radar. Right, we're, we're very aware and we're hoping to incorporate infinity groups, perhaps the one in March. Um, and we d will not probably use the, it was great to have it at the ASC. I think it was very neutrally, like people felt that that was a very neutral location. It just wasn't big enough. It, um, and it, so, you know, with COVID and 
and we want as many people to feel comfortable. So transportation is something that we will have to work on. I mean, one of the things, um, so I didn't have a car for a long time when I had the three boys. And so I'm, I'm so glad that the park is at Kendrick Park now. But I also remember not being able to go to a lot of school events because I we didn't have the transportation. And then once we moved into the Crocker Farm area where they provide transportation for events, I mean, I think I had a car by then, but it just made me, I said something to the principal because I was so happy that they were thinking about the folks that don't have a car and that they can still, you know, go to these events and special occasions that they provide at the school. So um, we do, uh, we will be looking into that because um, as much as people would like to say the middle school and high school are accessible, they're not really accessible. So, um, and I think that the crowds are, the, um, participation or the community members that are attend or is, is that large where we're going to need like the cafeteria of one of the schools to really be able to how you know have everybody feel comfortable so we will have to work on transportation for that with the school department so those things are on our radar as well oh well, you know they're on mine from personal experience at least so thank you i mean transportation could be as easy as encourage you know neighbors if somebody want to give a family a ride we'll give you you know x amount of gas money to just you know help your neighbor come and and you know attend the event might be a good way thank you for I, that. I agree i agree miss pat but i think mm -hmm. that um you know as jen said finding transportation that that should be something we as a town provide for these conversations if people are going to you know attend them and be engaged we need to figure out a way to bring those communities um you know so we could have you know folks who either choose not to have a vehicle a personal vehicle or or without a personal vehicle we want them in those conversations i would imagine so you know i think it's it's on us Mm -hmm. as as a town to try to figure it out i agree it's always good to help your neighbor but um i think we it pay we pay i mean we pay town will still well, pay for per, it perhaps yeah. but i think it that's needs, what yeah, i meant definitely yeah. to be a more yeah. organized effort is yeah. all i'm yeah. yeah yeah so great thank you jen sorry uh, this is deborah just to chime in real quickly um miss pat the only thing is i'll put my attorney hat on just for a little bit it's just that if 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 the town is going to ask for someone to like they're going to pay someone and then you know to to drive someone but then if an accident happens i know like, it i know it so so it has to be it should be a little bit more organized you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> because i got, know it mm -hmm. i should know <laughs> <I'm an employer. laughs> oh come on now attorney <laughs> Attorney Deb keeps keeps us on our toes. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. Thank that's right. That's <laughs> right. All right. Any other questions for Jennifer and DEI? How can we support you and Ms. Kamala? Well, I think one of the ways would be able to help spread the word about the different events that were we're hosting um and then you know all of your ideas are valued and appreciated so um we try very hard to to make them happen for instance i know people felt like nothing you know we had kind of dropped the the ball with CSWG's recommendations, but I know that Pamela and myself keep those live and so even at the MMA I you know I don't I just went to see I went to a regionalization session and not so much because I feel like there's a lot that could happen in Amherst that could be more regionalized with the surrounding towns and so but in my mind I was also I was thinking about you know them helping the different the different towns helping to support the homeless shelter that is going to to be um here off of Main Street but also even the 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 youth center, right? Because in those two immediate surrounding towns to the north and south of us, south being Hadley, north being um, Sunderland, the um, children of color there, you know, could probably really utilize um, a youth center. And none of those towns could necessarily afford to do it on their own. And so mm -hmm. if we regionalize it and it's somewhere where worst case scenario, if we couldn't provide that, we would have to put it somewhere where all of those buses could could align right and mm -hmm. so that the hours align and hopefully we'll be able to have you know better transportation than that but 
just as minimally as if needed. So we're, we're really, we are thinking about the other recommendations from the CSWG. We have not forgotten them. I have not forgotten them. I sat there with you guys through all those meetings. So it's drilled into my, my head a little bit, so. We appreciate you, thank you. And also Multicultural Center, don't forget that. Didn't forget that one either. Oh, okay, we appreciate you. Great, thank you. Um, I'm just looking at the time, it's about 7.35. I'm looking at the agenda and I feel like C and D would go really, really quickly. So I'm wondering if we can use those, you know, like move those up first and then, wait, no, D and E, I mean. Is that what I said? D and E are really very short sentences, I think. Hope. <laughs> um, Say that again. Which one? Uh, D. So the email address and then the post update would be pretty quick. Um, and I imagine the Youth Empowerment Center is a hot ticket item. Listening sessions. I think it sounds like we're ready to try and move forward on on getting some more concrete details about which areas we might want to try and focus on. Um, so, so I'm wondering if we can move D and E up and then resume with B, C, F, I, G. I, I have a suggestion. Yeah. I'm fine if we move D and E up. I think we should do um, B, C because they're going to take some time. The F, GH is what my agenda item, and it'll be very quick, is what I'm thinking. Which one? FGH will be very uh, quick. Quick. Okay. So should we do D through H first? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So we're going to start with CSS JC email address. Okay. Um, I was wondering, and this is partially because we had a missing comment go through the Amherst Engage page, um, which finally was forwarded to us recently. Um, um, I was wondering if it would be possible to get an email address um, for CSSJC that's on our website that people can send in public comments to. And then I, I think if I remember correctly, the way that the CSWG did it was that one of the co-chairs would respond and not reply all. Is it CSWD or is it um, our town staff? Is that what Jennifer you know, managed? So um, the town's usual practice is that committees and boards don't have their own emails. There have been a few, the CSWG was a working group. Mm -hmm. So they, um, they uh, were allowed to do that because it wasn't going to be up first. The email wouldn't be in existence for so long, would only be in existence for a certain amount of time. Um, and I'm looking at the email right now because I did reach out once I saw it on the agenda and I was like, let me just make sure that I have um, an answer for you guys. So if you could just give me one second, I'm sorry, I didn't have it up already. Why are you looking at that? We have a counselor Dorothy Pam around. Do we bring her in or does he have, want to make any comment or whatever? She, um, in regard to the email? No, 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 just in general. Oh no, she, so okay. the, when the staff liaison or the staff liaison, I'm sorry, when the council liaisons are here, they're not supposed to be in the actual meeting itself, like in the, they should be panelists. Okay. Um, if you have specific questions from her, she can answer those and then we would bring her in that way, but otherwise they're supposed to remain as panelists. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm looking and it seems like he did not. So you want to come back with that, Ms. Pack? Do you want to go to the next um, line item there? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Ian is looking for that. The post, I just wanted to let everyone know, I did file the complaint with the post commission on January 5th. So that has been Thank filed. You. It will be in process. It is a joint filing with the Human Rights Commission. Um, that's about it. Excellent. So, so for, 
So for people who might be listening to our meeting in the future, I know what you mean. So you're, you're talking regarding the July 5th, correct? Yes, sorry. So I filed, um, I filed on behalf of CSSJC and in conjunction with the Human Rights Commission, a complaint to the Peace Officer Standard um, Commission regarding the July 5th incident and the town's subsequent handling of it. Um, there was concern that the incident itself violated professionalism standards um, in dishonest conduct and then in the town's follow-up around the incident they did not report the complaint from HRC to the post commission nor did they report the complaint that was described in the letter received by one of the parents so that is um, the body of the complaint so, so Allegra, thank is, there you. Any, okay. is, is there any indication how long um, yeah. it takes to get a response? I, there was, it was just a generic, we received okay. your Just so we'll know, thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you both. Yeah. The next um, item. Next would be the child care and elder stipend. Okay, so that would be me. So we're talking about, you know, residents getting involved with committees, running for election, and sometimes um, issue of dependent care might be, you know, challenge for people to fully participate. We have a lot of talent in our community and our town is well resourced. And I think we need to really push for this upcoming um, budget season to include uh, child care and elder care or anyone that has some, you know, uh, household or family member with disability or just child care and elderly, elderly care. It's, um, it's good investment for our town um, to tap into people who are willing to serve our town. So that's it. I'm rushing because I no. promise you guys it won't stay too long. So we need to have an action. Do we want to formally write as you know our budget request, you know, to the finance committee? Uh, we need because I'm an action woman, so we can't just talk about it. We need to take it to people who make decisions who are working on the budget to include that. And the child care, elder care should not only be limited to elect, elected officials, anyone that serves on our town committee who need that should be given it to. So Ms. Pat and uh, yes. Jennifer, is your hand raised about this issue or is it about the other issue that you were researching? Well, both. Okay. <laughs> but I can answer just one if you would like. I can answer okay, what we're ahead. on right now. Yeah, so, okay. go ahead. Mm -hmm. So one of the things as community participation officer, I'm one of three, um, that we've been working on is we realize you can physically see just about who's not at the table, but we've been trying to figure out why. So our next movement is why aren't the people um, engaged? And, you know, and we'll be honest, some people just don't, like I just remember before I worked for the town, if somebody had asked me, why don't I join a committee, I'd probably be like, because I'm too busy trying to feed my family, right? Like, I don't have the money for that. I don't have the time for that. And so we're really trying to make sure that, and one of the things that we do this year is that we're going to really get to the nitty gritty of it, I guess you could say, and find out why, and then how we can break down those barriers and and to have people interact. So child care is one of them. And I know that it was a in the CPO, it was in our budget for child care um or at least we requested it right like so there's the actual budget and then there's what like what we put in so we did put in funds for child care um just because even for events that like we did for the racial healing day right like um we so that we can pay somebody for for taking the time i mean divine that's his he did it because that's a consequence of coming to town after school asking for money right like here you go here's something for you to do so um but we would like to have other people involved in and in providing the child care as well. 
if yeah, if I may respond, I think that's nope, great. Can't. It's not. It's actually not what I'm thinking about. I'm actually thinking our town to pay stipend to to resident who need that help, and it can vary, vary from you know individuals. We have people who might have more than one dependent care. We might have you know. So it's not up to the town. So, you know, to actually provide on site childcare for ongoing, somebody who's on committee. What you're suggesting, I think, is wonderful. Keep doing that, but that's not what I meant. I meant for people to, you know, get, you know, get money to pay for preferred childcare they need arrangement, whether it's household or an you know, extended family member, whatever it is, just give it to them. You know, they get to say how much it's going to cost them to do it. I have grandchildren. I'm even embarrassed to say how much they pay for childcare in order for them to do whatever they need to do, um, run their life. Like so many people um, with young children, I don't think I'll be able to afford childcare if I, I was raising kids in this day and age. So I have respect for, you know, young parents. I have respect for folks, you know, taking care of, you know, elderly, disabled, you know, I have a family member that is, you know, but I'm not speaking for myself, but I, I think it's necessary. We need it. So Thank I know you. that yeah. stipends in general are on yeah. the radar for the town manager because it's been brought up several times. They don't, wasn't necessarily specified to specifically for child care, but I know that stipends in general for uh, boards and committees is something that is on his radar. If I could oh, wait, wait, share real quick, Dean's and Dean's I, been waiting. Yes, I've been waiting. I wanted to, because I, Miss Pat, I know we've been in conversation about this. So I wanted to share with um, wow. our group. There oh, are models within the Northeast here in Montpelier, Vermont. This huh. is, um, they had a whole task force that, you know, really figured this out. Here is their actual program policy that has is instituted this year. And so you could see um, stipends per meeting can be provided to volunteers to compensate them for their time, childcare assistance, food, transportation, or other needs in order to attend meetings. Hmm. So, I mean, it can be done. And I like like Miss Pat was saying, Jen, I appreciate, you know, that's needed too, oftentimes, making sure childcare is available for, you know, events, um, volunteers, that type of thing. But particularly when it's as specific as, you know, let's say committee members for an official committee like this, you know. Um, you know, we think of how many hours uh, are put in or lost if you have to go take care of a child or an elder. So um, there are examples right here in the Northeast um, for these types of stipends to, to be used by, you know, uh, official committee members, uh, board members, that type of thing. And then they have stipulations on how it can't be used. So yeah. um, I'd be glad to share that uh, with you, Jen, and whomever else. Dee, do you think you could forward that to Jen and maybe that could be put in our packet post meeting? Absolutely. Uh, so I think that's yeah. a great model um, and it's nice to not have to reinvent the wheel. I'm looking at it now. So I will, <laughs> uh, I will take um, this to the town manager. Uh -huh. Right, and just put it in the packet so for the future folks can can see it. Yeah, it's something that we have, you know, as a as a group, um, particularly Miss Pat and I. You know, we see Allegra, we see other, you know, parents struggling on these committees, these boards. Uh, they do a great job, but you know, Allegra is almost a brain surgeon here. She could be running the hospital. I'm just saying, you know, in terms of your productivity, <laughs> akin to that. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's uh, something that I feel it. Yeah, and and that's young you know, children. It, exactly, exactly, and that's just it. It's like so, you know, someone else is taking care of the kids right now. So, I'm I'm just saying these are things where we could be more productive if you want to look at it in terms of of the economy equity. Uh, 
equity. And, and, well, equity, definitely. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, to look at it as, in terms of productivity and what we could be doing in this community. And we, Miss Pat, you know, pointing out about elder care, you yeah. know, um, is really important. Uh, mm -hmm. As we begin to age, uh, we're yeah. taking care of our, you know, parents, you know, sometimes grandparents. So these things are, are important for us to be able to have all voices at yeah. the table. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Pat, would you propose drafting some sort of statement on our behalf, or would you sure. propose well, including a statement in a greater budget document that might also address Crest DEI, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, before I answer that question, uh, Jennifer is planning to share it with you know, the town manager. Do you think I should do still do a draft I can send to everyone? Jen? Sorry, I was reading the, the, the policies because I was trying to figure out if they were giving the money before or after because I'm just already thinking about the responses that I might get by sharing this. Um, so I think that you should. Do a draft something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I will. Uh, just did so I answer that your question? Stays yeah. fresh and on um, sure sure is that all you want me to to draft when do you want me to do it by allegra um so let's see i know i had started a document about some of our other asks from our last meeting yeah and i think it probably got lost in the shuffle of some yeah. other things that happened in the past month and a half um yeah holidays and whatnot. Um, so I will reshare or perhaps share for the first time that draft okay. of the document with Jen to distribute to everybody. Okay. And I will try and do that by the end of this week. If you want to take some time after that comes out to see if you would want it to be like included within that draft or a separate document. We we'll just do one draft. Okay. Let's one do draft. one. Yeah. Okay. I so just included it. If I send, or do to you, everybody, if I send to everybody and then yeah. do you want to send to So you, then you can add it on. Wanna you want to send to me to add on to what yeah. I will send to everybody. Yeah, yeah let okay. me do that. And yeah. that is okay. We're allowed Wait, to do that. Are you sending it oh, at, so, on behalf Jennifer. of everyone? Or no, just... to Jennifer. Should I send it to you, Jennifer, and then you send it to Allegra? Or should we both send to you and you merge them into one and then you send that one to everyone? Well, but I, I my my first question is, is this on behalf of everybody from the CSSJC? Yes. Or is it just personally from Miss Pat? Because I'm pretty, I feel like if it's from everyone on the CSSJC that, uh, yeah, that people need to all have seen it. Everyone needs to have seen it and agreed on it. And, and I wouldn't want you guys to do that via email. Um, so I was waiting for all that to go back and forth before interjecting. So um, if we are in agreement as a committee that we want to um, uh, eventually draft something, um, it sounds like if we appoint Allegra and Miss Pat to kind of work on this together, it goes through Jen, goes through uh, Jen to, to send, but we then have to see it together in our next committee to kind of vote on this is what we want. It's not like all of us could could attach comments to it. Um, I, I would rather not because then I, I would probably have to put all those comments in it. What I would say is that it's possible and I will check tomorrow and send an email out that I that I could send it out and mm see if people had changes. And if there are so many changes, then we would have to bring it back to the group. But if there aren't so many changes, then it's possible Then I can just go ahead and, and you can send it. I do have a question because I think that from the recent GOL town manager goals meeting and document, I feel like they were like, they had to track changes on their document and I'm not sure if 
that was shared with everybody or not? And then I, I like, I don't want to speak on that because right. I know that they do do track changes, but I don't know how they do them and where they're doing them. Right. So I, I'm, I don't want to respond on that, but okay. Just for now, I will clarify it. I'm happy to clarify it tomorrow. And then we can figure out how to proceed from there. Okay. If that's. That yeah, from what I remember with Board of Registrars and I, maybe it's different, I don't know. But as long as, you know, there's not a quorum of people all trying to weigh in. So it's like, if we say, or we agree that Allegra and Miss Pat are working on this on our behalf, um, they can do that and then send the the whatever finalized draft to you, Jen, and then you send it to the whole group and see if we all agree and have our comments. And those comments go to you. It's not, you know, blind CC or CC to everybody. Right. And so I just my confusion, all of that I'm I is is fine. And I know that it's it's there's no difference between what the um, what was the board? I'm sorry. The registrar's board versus those rules are still the same because yeah. they're, yeah. um, but I just, I'm a little bit confused with once everybody sends with the final product and how that's being, like you guys send in the, co if, if everybody has comments and then wants to make changes, <laughs> that's the part that I am un unsure of. No, 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 no. What I was thinking about, it, did you finish talking? I'm sorry. Are no, you done? okay. I'm done. Okay. Go ahead. What I was thinking is what we did at CSWG. We send information to you and then you send it out. In this case, I'm hoping my thinking is send it to you. You send it to Allegra. Uh, Allegra send whatever she has. You put it together. I know it's more work for you, but and then send it to everybody, then we discuss it at February meeting. Does that work? That's the part that is, yes, then you discuss it at February meeting. My yeah. concern was not me sending it to Allegra and you sending it to me. It was more about that overall. Editing. The overall picture, well, not the overall picture, but the overall result of everybody's input, That, if that makes sense. Does that? Okay, so are you concerned about doing the track changes? Because once, like, we can put it up, you know, during that meeting. Oh, no, no. Once it just, I just wanted to make sure that it gets to the meeting, right? right. That the as decision as... of approving it isn't done outside of a meeting. Right. No, it would no, be. No, 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 no. So, February meeting. Yeah. So, February meeting, we will revisit the document that Ms. Pat and I work together on, whether that is her sending me her changes or her ads to whatever I write and, or us both sending it to Jen based on clarification she will get, correct? No, I don't need clarification on that. Like okay. Ms. Pat can send it to me or you can send it to me and then I can send it to the other person. Um, and I'm okay with that. I just, my concern was the final approval of it. That's where, and I didn't hear that it was gonna be done at the February meeting before. Yes. So that's why I was concerned. Okay. And Ms. Pat, is, yes. is your thinking on town council stipends under the same kind of, if we increase town council stipends, then perhaps more people would be- More people, to... basically, yeah. Okay. We will, yeah, we will increase diversity. So will you roll yeah. that part into your statement as well? Yeah, that's what okay. I plan to do, yeah. Okay. Not, not necessarily budget, but just, you know, uh, trying to explain why we need it. Okay. And that's why, you know, the rest of uh, committee members will have to review it and put in input. Well, in or, we can cut, or we can cut to the chase and um, make a motion to, you know, send that recommendation to the, the town manager. But that would just kind of, you know, I guess we do need a letter, maybe. Yeah, yeah we need something. That's what we're talking about. Maybe yeah. the motion could be in February. I think that no? makes sense if we do the motion in February so that there's actually written language that we're moving on. Yeah. And I would just say whatever the final product between Allegra and Miss Pat is, 
should be submitted in time for me to put it in the packet. I mean, I try to send the packet out on the Friday before the meeting, so mm -hmm. people have time to get through it. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. So any questions? The time, it's eight o'clock. Do we want to take like a two to three minute break? Okay, before, before that happens, I just want to make sure um, Freke and uh, Deborah don't have any questions about the child care stipend or the elder care stipend that uh, we want to recommend. Not for me, thank you. Okay. Deb. Not for me either. Okay, all righty. All thank right. you. So can we take like a three minute break? Yep. All right. So I don't want to lose you guys, Deborah and Freke. Yeah, no, no, three minutes. That would be that would be good too for me because I do need to run to the restroom. So yeah. be good. Okay. Oh, you're <laughs> home. That's good. That's good. No, right. no, I'm not home. I'm not home. I'm at my son's practice. Okay. <laughs> so yes. back okay. at 8.03. Uh, what what time do we come back? 8.03. Gotcha. Okay. Is everybody back? Um, I don't see D yet. Um, and Deborah, are you there? Frankie? No. Okay. Okay, where are we? 
when we're talking about motion before we had our break. <coughs> yeah. And I think we would make that in February. Okay. Once we have the document, right? <sighs> Okay. Right. So what is the next item? Um, ARPA distribution. Okay. So, I mean, ARPA distribution and um, uh, business community, I mean, a lot of people are now aware of it. The only thing I want to bring up tonight is that our town needs to start rethinking what economic development is. It's not just landlords renting out you know, their front stores. That's, that's not the only definition of economic development. There are other businesses that contribute to the development of ec economy in our town, and they should also be considered when decisions have been made. So to let people know that for the 25K um, upper funds, that was supposed to go to the existing businesses, um, only 30% of BIPOC received funding. 70 went to white owned businesses. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just the amount is too small. And the way uh, the, the, the data has been presented, um, it kind of did not break it down to race. The initial document that we got stated mostly minority, which include white women. And basically, my position is we are not against anyone that got the funded, but the money is not enough. And Black and BBA did not get anything group. So we are asking our town manager, our town council to um, provide funding for black owned businesses of BBA members. Um, but we're not against people who already received the, the funding. And that uh, you know, brick and mortar businesses should not be the, the criteria only to uh, make decisions regarding uh, who contributes to economy in our town, because even if you don't have it, you know, people live in Amherst, they pay their taxes, they, they pay rent. So they are contributing to uh, economy in our town. That's all I want to say. I'm kind of rushing because no. I promise you guys it will be very quick. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I just want to make sure everyone is seeing what's on the screen. This is uh, a re kind of conceptualization of the data uh, that was sent. And um, you can see for that 25K, um some uh that there's women that uh who are white who identify as white who or who were identified as white um and as you say uh nothing against that because that is a um national my minoritized group when it comes to uh businesses and um how they're considered uh, with under that ranking or categorization. Um, the, the issue becomes, was uh, there a look at black and brown businesses and Asian businesses equally? And did that information uh, get out there? Um, and then the 40K, if you could talk a little bit about that, because that's also sure. on the screen. Sure. So the 40K basically um, is unclear because the Bay uh, reopened the grant again uh, that is running right now through February. So, so far three businesses, they are all BIPOC businesses and I appreciate that. Um, but up till today, we don't know how much was assigned to any of these recipients. So 100% of what we have for um, new businesses went to BIPOC, but we don't know how much you know, each got. So the major glaring issue here is we don't even know who got what, how much. 
and we we've, we've been requesting this for a long time. I don't understand why our town cannot make bid to produce its uh, tax dollars money to produce, you know, who got what. We don't know how much each business has got. We don't. And so to me, I feel that sometimes CSSJC is being marginalized. We request for information. It, it doesn't, we don't get everything that we want. I know back in August, September, when I requested for this information, I was very clear to have the data broken down by race. I was ignored. It did not happen. It's not what we got. And I had to break this down. I'm the one who did this. I had to break it down to show that for the existing businesses, only three BIPOC, 30%. There were 10 recipients, seven of them, went to white businesses, including one business in Belcher Town. Okay, so and I, we're not against any business that got the funding. It's just that BBA members need funding. I'm sure with other um, racial groups, the Asian American groups, the Hispanic groups, the um, Native American groups, they all need funding. And we have $2 million left. I feel that most of that money should go to businesses who are still hurting because people rented spaces doesn't mean that you know, they're doing well. This is a seasonal town, transitional town. And you, know, you run business for nine months, students are gone. It's a ghost town during summer. And businesses still have to pay their, their expenses. And most of them did not benefit from APA fund. That's not right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, not all communities utilize their Chamber of Commerce uh, to disperse ARPA funds for businesses. Yep. There was a, a more equitable way in which they approached it. And I say equitable simply because um, the chamber is made up of uh, members that pay for membership. Um, and so, you know, that's not, that does not include all business owners within a community. And therefore other towns, uh, Northampton, uh, for instance, there was a different um, way in which they dispersed ARPA funds. So it's something that um, needs to be looked at um, not only in terms of if we're about equity, right? So to examine that and how to do better, you know, go forward and do better, but how does the Black Business Association, which has been around since 2016, uh, whether the chamber was aware of it or not, they, they've been around, I'm, I'm a member, yep. um, how we should have been approached and black businesses in general should have been approached black and brown businesses should have been approached and this is something when you know we can say oh there there was this kind of blind ne neglect because they didn't know i was in a listening session about a year and a half ago with chamber members that met with a prominent historically uh, uh, rooted business, black business uh, in this town and said that they did not know, you know, about this history. They did not know how entrenched this person is and their business in the community until we had, and it was done through Zoom because it was during COVID. Um, so, you know, it's not just kind of innocent uh you know uh situation here it is not it's 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 they're not doing the outreach they're not doing the work of the outreach to have equity so again this is an instance where we can do better and if we're talking about healing if we're talking about having uh equality here in this community work has to happen because we're doing that work. We're trying to stay afloat here. And we're trying to say, here, look at this. Let's do better. There has to be that outreach 
from these predominantly white institutions in this community to not only make them more inclusive, again, kudos to the chamber for doing this event. Sounds like a beginning, but I don't know if anyone outreached to the, the Black Business Association and invited them, you know, reached across and invited them to this event, invited them to this forum. I mean, that's when you're talking about, hey, we did something that caused harm. Let's repair it by bringing you into this forum so we can hear from you and do better. People have to be courageous. People have to do better, particularly if they want this community to flourish for everyone. Thank you, Ms. Pat, for, for doing this. Thank, thank you, Dee. Um, just to add, I'm also a member of BBA, full uh, disclosure. And I know there has been a campaign to diminish my group, BBA. Um, people are saying that it doesn't exist. It was a made up. It was a one, two member organization. And if anybody wants to know, um, they can contact me. I will send you the list. The list is out there. The town councilors have it. The town manager has it. Uh, the CSSJC group have it. So we do exist. It's 2016. And in uh, the same year, actually, we created a um, business card, which I personally distributed to any Black person that I saw at the Taste of Amherst. The chambers, they know about BBA in 2016. People you know, decide, you know, choose what they want to remember or what they want to forget. So for people who say they don't know about it, that's not my problem because I, did, I was out there you know, trying to recruit folks, BBA, 2016. So if people don't know, I can't help it, but we do exist. So that falsehood that is going on in the community you know, needs to stop. It's another way to marginalize Black-owned businesses. Okay. I'm done. All right, so ARPA, uh, it sounds like uh, besides this really informative uh, conceptualization of the 25K and then the 40K, um, <laughs> there, there's going to be a meeting or what's next? So, I mean, well, um, BBA group have made it known to our town manager, so we're just waiting. Um, okay. We don't know what the next step right. is, but um, if CS, CSSJC group, you know, want to help with the advocacy, but we do not want to go through the bed because they're not the only economic development entity. BBA is, and the town, we need to be more creative. We do not want to go through white-led organizations. We want to make the decision by ourselves. Give us the money. We will utilize it according to what the upper fund is said to be and what other communities are also doing. We do not want white-led organization to, to um, be the one making decisions for us. We don't want to go through them, period. Thank you, Ms. Pat. It's about equity and self-efficacy from my standpoint, so. And empowerment, and yes. empowerment too. Self Definitely. Yeah, Thank we you. have to be on the table in this town when decisions regarding businesses, any decision that impact businesses, BBA should be involved. We are part of the economic development in our town, period. We're here to stay, we're not going anywhere. Okay. So it sounds like uh, at least there's some movement in trying to get a conversation with the town manager. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, yeah. Someone had their hand up or? No? Okay, what's next on the agenda? I could bring it up. Am I done? I think I'm done. 
Are you done? Uh, how many more items? Yeah. I had three. We, what you, is it? We've done all three. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so youth center and listening sessions are the last remaining items. Listening session? Yeah. Do you, should we go to listening sessions yeah. next? Okay. Um, so I believe it was Lauren Mills who had come to public comment a few months ago um, with concerns about her school age child having some difficulty at the middle school and suggesting that we hold um, some listening sessions, I think pertaining to the school system perhaps, or just safety in general. Um, and then there was the further email that was sent to the committee regarding you know, youth input on youth empowerment center and youth needing a space, a, a safe space, especially BIPOC youth. Um, I think last time we talked a little bit about also reaching out to some of the other committees to see if they would want to hold joint sessions. Um, and then, of course, tonight we heard from Earl saying it would be really helpful to have some sort of community conversation hosted together. So I think that there are a few different a few different areas in which it would be helpful to have listening sessions. So. I think probably as a group, we should figure out which areas those would be, when, how, all of those, um, all of those details. Um, Ms. Pat. So if I may, I was the one who volunteered last month yes. that I will reach out to different committees. And um, it appeared that um, Lauren Mills has started organizing something because you know she will email groups of people and I tend to be on it. So she's already started uh, organizing something. She has clear idea of what she would like the listening session to be. So I'm wondering, like you stated, Allegra, how can we combine both with you know the crest thing? you know, just to save everybody's time and make it more meaningful to, I see some, some, some uh, similarities too. So um, maybe to reach out back to Lauren to see if she would be open to um, collaborating with Crest Program with what, you know, her thinking, but it seems like she has a clear idea of what she would like to see which is a little bit different of what I understood last month. Okay. Yeah, she, she does want to be in charge of it, basically is what I'm trying to say. So, so this is Deborah, I guess. So for me, what, what is Lauren trying to do? I guess that's a thing, she, right? Are we, are we like in line use. with her, her mission vision? Yeah, no, I get it. But what about the youth? What, what is it that she wants to focus on and stuff like that? Um, so that then we can sure yeah. so my understanding i don't want to speak for her you know she was earlier you know in the audience but she left my understanding is that we need resources we need you know to support our youth basically is the summary without going into details you know i've been working with her you know on a private level issues but i think she's looking more to you know community gathering that will you know discuss globally about our youth in our town. How are we supporting our youth? I was hoping she would be, she would stay a little bit longer, but she left already. Does that make sense to you, Deb? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I just didn't Does that know make much. sense? Yeah. Okay. E? Yeah, so I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I love that Earl has also suggested it. What I would like to see, you know, if we can organize it um, as soon as the end of next month, um, you know, in the month of February, there's always these very representative events, you know, um, that are supposed to pack in a bunch of meaningful stuff within the shortest month of the year for Black History Month. Um, mm -hmm. I would rather hear from the community 
and um, maybe like what Jen and um, Pamela Young are doing in these, um, uh, you know, meetings or conversations every other month or so, uh, we should maybe structure at least, um, you know, two listening sessions or three listening sessions a year. And we could begin with Cress. I would like to also see one where it's specifically, you know, because a lot of our issues come up. It is, you know, we have predominantly a Black, African American, West African uh, voices. I would like to hear from our, you know, Latino Hispanic community and what are their issues, you know, um, having to do with equity, you know, and make sure there's a translator there. I think that is uh, tremendously important and it's, it's an area, a sector of our community that we don't get to hear from a lot. I mean, we're so blessed to have Philip, you know, with us, but Philip's one person, you know, and I'm sure you would agree, you can't speak for every, you know, uh, the, the Latinos and Hispanic culture, it's so varied. So, you know, I think um, having some type of listening session where we have a focus. So maybe the first one would be about Chris and our kind of cross fertilization of what we're doing as a committee and what Chris is doing, how we could, you know, uh, support Chris, et cetera. And then try to think of one where uh, it's led, maybe the next partner, logical partner is the Human Rights Commission, you know? But I'd also, again, I don't wanna water down, let's hear from the, the Latino and Hispanic community, you know, where we have, a, have some translation, but we have people there that can uh, discuss what comes up for you when we talk about safety and equity. So um, I would like to see more of this. And when you think of, you know, budgeting, well, we need a microphone or a couple of microphones. We need the space that's big enough for people to spread out. Um, you know, it's, it's relatively cheap to produce. But I think the benefit is large for the community and, and should be part of our, our service in what we're trying to do. So I don't know if we're ready to, you know, cause February is gonna be our next meeting, but maybe we can begin given a tentative date for the first one with Cress. Of course, we'd have to check in with Earl and, and his people uh, to schedule something as soon as the end of February. Well, you know, and I'm like looking at the Friday before February ends, and that's the 27th. And then the 28th is a Saturday. So anyway, just a suggestion. And then after that, in our February meeting, maybe we could schedule the next thing I'd like to hear, um, you know, I know Ms. Pat has something to say, but I'd like to hear Philip, you know, maybe what you think about that idea as well. And not, you know, not to just focus on the Latino community, but it's a, it's a community that I would like to know personally, what are their feelings about, you know, safety and um, equity, you know, in, in our town, you know, and then we can move on to, to other community uh, groups, these affinity groups, as we say. Can I just clarify that the dates in February, the last weekend, the Friday is the 24th, oh, and that's the ending week of February break, so you might oh. lose some people who have kids in public schools. Um, Thank you. See, I didn't even pay attention to that. Very short, very short month. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm looking at the wrong cal. I'm still looking at January anyway. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> oh, because so, I was like, I think I'm not 
I think I have a flight on the 26th and I think it's Sunday. (laughs) You're right. Well, and March is Women's History Month. You know, it again, it it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, let's let's go ahead and begin scheduling it and uh, advertising it uh, to get people excited about coming out and uh, participating and then say, well, we'll be able to announce in, in that one. And our next one, our next listening session is scheduled for this time or whatever this month. And we'll focus on this, you know, or we'll discuss this. So, all right, I'm finished with that. Okay. Can I go? Yes, Ms. Pat. So very quickly, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I was looking at an email that Ms. Lauren has said for a very small group of people. And um, so basically she's thinking of putting together different town committees, which is what we talked about last month. And um, I think um, public health department, which she's a committee member, she wants to involve them. It will be a webinar type of thing, Zoom. Um, Yeah, webinar type of uh, gathering. And she's wondering how the town could provide some stipend for the participants and for the event, basically, is what she's saying. So it seems like she has very clear idea of what she would like to see happen. So um, she has sent it to, including Ms. Uh, Pamela, but she's not here tonight, for a very small, small, small group of people. So she did remind me to bring it up today. <laughs> um, so how can we support her project? I can forward it to you guys if I, I have to talk to her. Well, I, I like the idea. And I yeah. think it's it's very similar um, to what we're we're talking about with yeah. us. You know, yeah. um, mental health is what right. her focus is, is what, yeah, she wants to focus on. And the reason, the reason why I'm getting the email, she said she doesn't have everybody's email and CSSJC don't have one email. So she sent stuff to me, assuming that, you know, I can forward it, but I didn't ask her if I should do that in this case. But, you know, I will check with her and I'll forward it to you guys so that you guys will have an idea of what she's asking for. And she's thinking of it to be in March. Oh, also in March. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's all. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. Allegra, you have uh, your hand up. Unless, yeah. Philip, did you? You didn't have your hand up. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So, I also did talk to the Affordable Housing Trust at our last meeting, and they would like a little bit more information about what might be uh, an idea. They didn't have, like, we don't, I was just like, eh, they want to, we want to do listening sessions with different committees. It wasn't like very set in stone or anything, but Philip and I did talk yesterday because I guess the Human Rights Commission might be on board in supporting something around housing as well. So I think, I think if the structure, if we can kind of develop what a structure would look like and then can partner with these different groups or, or you know, different stakeholders that have an interest in whatever theme we're discussing, that would be a great way to A, build connections and B, kind of hear about different topics that intersect with community safety and social justice. And I think if Lauren is wanting to spearhead something like, hey, go for it and we'll show up and support you. And you know, if, if we decide to co-host or whatever, that would be great. But it, it doesn't necessarily all have to come under the umbrella of CSSJC organizing things if there are people in the community who are wanting to do this on, you know, with their own networks. And, um, but I do think, I do think um, kicking things off with Crest would be great. I think having something specific to youth, especially perhaps with a ear to the idea of a youth center or what kinds of other services are needed and and making sure that we're not just catering to parents, but to the youth themselves. Um, and whether that looks like having affinity groups so the youth are in one group and the, you know, not youth are in a different group, whether it's a parent or guardian or, you know, teacher or 
whoever might sh show an interest in the future of our youth. Um, so what are we deciding tonight? You know, so I shall connect with Lauren. Well, hold up, Miss Pat. Philip has something to say. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I said. Oh my gosh, if I could figure out my computer, I could talk. <laughs> um, yeah, so to your point, D, um, I think that that would be actually really good. I, we found that um, the last Latinx um, event that we did was um, Latina, Latino and Latinx, Latina <laughs> Heritage Month. That was a very well attended um, event. And from that, um, a lot of community members have reached out to me, have reached out to um, different people to basically try and make that presence that you are talking about that is not in this town a little bit more heard. I think that it, there is some difficulties with work related and childcare issues. So that's something I think definitely to consider whenever we put on a group. I do wanna say that the overall idea is great and I definitely, do support Lauren Mills. I just do feel like if we're gonna have this listening session and that listening session and this and that, like I think we need that's a little bit too much. So we might need to hone in onto like what we want to do, what we want to um hone in on. And as far as obviously reaching out to any members of the community, I will gladly do so to get people hopefully to show up and have their voices heard at a table. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, planning the listening sessions and, and who to partner with um, maybe would take two groups with us, you know, as opposed to one for each one. I think CRESS is a big enough project, though, that it could maybe us and then CRESS. Um, but I agree not to have too many of them but we could plan it out for, you know, the year. And then, um, you know, with foresight, uh, you know, think towards the, the following year. But I, I think trying to solicit participation or interest from, from those other departments and organizations. I mean, I think of POKU at the high school, you know, and the youth there they should like what Allegra was saying, they should be a part of any decision-making and input and, you know, engagement having to do with the youth empowerment center, you know, um, Sunrise uh, being another voice, but particularly POKU, you know? So I, I think it would take some planning. So you bring up a really good point, uh, Philip. We just don't want to spread ourselves too thin on, on that regard. So, but I'm, I'm glad to know that uh, the Latinx community, I just know that some are language speakers and then some identify, you know, dip, so I, I'm always very careful, but uh, probably too careful. Thank you, Latinx, yes. Uh, so th this is Deborah. can I chime in? <clears throat> <clears throat> so I guess like, I think, you know, and I definitely agree that we probably should start out with CRESS um, just because, you know, CSWG had recommended it. And obviously it's something that CSSJC has been, you know, we've been very supportive of and making sure that they're successful. So I think we should, you know, start out with them. But I think in terms of Laura Mills, I, I think that that's a really interesting, you know, focus too, in terms of the youth. Um, you know, the, the other part too could be that maybe certain um, members of our group would want to work collaborate with her you know what I'm saying so it's not as if we all have to kind of work with her and things like that just to kind of like make sure that we have some input if we wanted to collaborate right and so that we have some input in terms of when the day is and blah 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 but I it, it wouldn't be a bad thing for us to do two listening sessions you know as long as they were again well organized and all of those things but our whole group wouldn't have to kind of be involved in it it could just be one or two members kind of working with her you know, I think, and even like the Crest one too, the whole group wouldn't have to kind of iron out every detail with, with Earl, it could be some committee members, you know. Um, and then my other point is in terms of it being well organized is again, you know, we need to kind of get advertising. I don't think we need to rush this. Like, of course, I don't think we need to do it months down the road, but I'm just saying we need to have it organized so that we have as many people as possible because 
you know, what are we thinking? Are we doing in person and Zoom? Are we doing Zoom? Are we doing just in person? I mean, we got to figure that those things out. Interpreters, translators, uh, translation for folks who, you know, are disabled, um, you know, uh, daycare, possible transportation, you know, maybe do it like like how the DI had done it when there's, um, you know, buses and things like that. We want to have as many, uh, you know, want to make it as accessible as possible for a variety of different people, the elderly, so on and so forth. Um, you know, I, I think I said daycare, right? Daycare, so on and so forth, so that we can get as many people there. So it's not a rush job just to kind of get people to, to come in. I really want it to be an opportunity for them to tell us, you know, what are they thinking about press, right? What, are, you know, have a conversation with Earl and his team and really get an opportunity for them to to get to know more about Crest and everything that, that, that Crest does. And then the same thing with the youth uh, um, conversation, it should really be you know, a meaningful kind of conversation and listening session, not just a rush job. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, Ms. Pat? Thank you, Deborah. So um, I have a slight different um, thinking. Um, our committee uh, have different terms. Some of us will be exiting in June if we don't get reappointed. And, you know, starting from May, we're talking about school vacations, people planning vacations, people losing interest. I feel that whatever we decide to do, it has to be March and April. That's all we have. May people already planning. And this is election year. Soon people are thinking about campaigning and stuff. So I'm a very deadline type of woman. I get lost when things are overextended. It's just out of sight, out of mind. If things get too, too much um, over planned, that will not be me. I, you know, I don't roll that way. I'm just saying, I'm very practical. And my concern is June uh, might be a transitional month for C CSSJC. You know, some of us might be moving on. I would like to continue, but I only have one year term. I'm just saying, I would like to see through something I, you know, you know I'm kind of involved with and don't see it through. I'll just shut up. That's where I'm coming from. And I hear you, Deborah. Um, but the way our society is set now, technology people just have short memory. Oh, we're planning an event in September. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People forget. Yeah. Oh no, but Miss Pat, don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying that's why I was saying not down the, you know, I was just saying yeah. for us to have it well planned, for us to think through all of this. Doesn't mean yeah. we're going to do it like in June. I'm down with what you're saying, like March, yeah. April, even yeah. February, end of February, if we can pull it off. But I yeah. want us to think about I want us to be intentional and really think about those elements, okay. right? To kind of really okay. put it out there, you know, as long as we're, you know, able to advertise, we're able to kind of get these other things like interpreters, so on and so forth, you know, make those happen. We'll just have to do some work. You know what I'm saying? As long as people are willing to do some work, I'm good with having it, you know, setting a deadline, but let's just be intentional about it. Got you. I'll do, I'll do the work. People tell me what to do. I'll, I'll help, I'll help uh, Lauren Mills, you know, whatever needs to be done behind the scene. I, I do very well organizing behind the scene more than anything else. So. Well, can we check in with um, Earl to see if March is um, a good time uh, mm -hmm. to have a listening session? If that, if we all agree that that should be our very first one and then uh, follow through with uh, checking in with Lauren for this, mm -hmm. this next one, yeah. but uh, March, could be the the one that we kind of kick it off with Cress. And I I mean, you know, Earl's right. It's like it's coming up on a year. It would be good to, you know, for everybody to check in with the community to see how are they understanding, how are they feeling um, the job uh, has gone in terms of Cress and the rollout. 
do they see their taxpayer money and, and the, the grants and all of that uh, being well spent, you know, in the community? I mean, these are all things that for people to really support Crescent in the long run, um, they have to feel, you know, somehow that the, it reflects what the vision was of CSWG, you know? So uh, I think maybe going with that as the first one, I would propose, I'd, I'd like to get the feedback of the, of the rest of the group. And um, I think Deborah makes a very good point that whatever we're going to do, it has to be something, you know, that we can be proud of, that is well organized as, as much as we can plan. Um, and it, it'll take some work. Um, I'm willing, like I said, to, to Earl to, to, you know, work with him on that. And it sounds like others uh, voiced that they would be willing to, to work on something like that. Thank you, Dee. And strategically, I think March makes a lot of sense. We're in the budget season. And may, maybe that might help to move the needle for the town council to increase funding for CREST program. So I kind of like that. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so do you want me to reach out to Earl? Yes. And we can uh, see about a March date. And then um, I guess, Jennifer, I would send that to you all for us to discuss for the February meeting. But if we're already kind of in the midst of planning, um, if it jives with Earl, um, I guess we would have to ask for uh, supports within the town for a space, all the things that kind of DEI did to plan for that conversation. We would want something uh, very similar, but with translation. I think, you know, um, people uh, with different uh, language, you know, languages should be able to, you know, hear and participate in a conversation about Cress. Allegra? Um, I am willing to help. Um, I'm just wondering if because of, like if we are, if there's just one or two people in conversation with Earl, if that is not a violation of open meeting law for planning purposes, or if it's a, you know, if it's a working group for a specific, thing that that February could just come back with an update as to because because if we can't make any decisions until February then I mean if we can only make one decision every month we're never going to get a, a, you know something planned but if if one or two commit you know committee members are working to plan something is that Allow. No, usually, usually you can have two people, right, um, Jennifer? You mean um, two co-chairs? Yeah. Or, you know, a co-chair and a member? Or... So if you appoint people in the group during the meeting to work on something, that's fine. Yeah. Right? Like, these two people are going to work on this. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Because not just went through that with HRC. Update next month rather than... Right. Waiting. Yeah. Okay. We'd have to on it. Oh, and one other thing, D, uh, maybe what we could do also is just think about dates and March where we're available, and then you can bring that to Earl. Can we do that now? Yeah. Can we do that quickly now? Okay. Well, let's hear there's people have their hand up. Jennifer, did you have your hand up or you know what? I don't I'm Someone said something, so I'll have to, maybe it'll okay. come back up. Philip, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just want to add in, obviously, when the working group gets formed, that would be decided. But thinking about translation and if we're doing multiple languages, how that works out. Because, you know, having someone speak in English, then having someone speak in Spanish every other sentence or whatever it is, is time consuming, one. And then two doesn't allow for some translations to translate into a productive way so then it just kind of may fall on like not understanding and then if you add in any other language that 
will obviously then you go one language, two language, three language, and so on. So just want to keep that in mind. No, that's your, to your point. I've been in those meetings where it's French, Spanish, and English, and it takes forever. So I think maybe if we can, you know, choose, um, you know, in this case, um, you know, Spanish for for those who are Spanish speaking, at least we would have that. I mean, when we think of numbers within the community, of course, there's Khmer, and you know, we can go on. Um, but in this case, I think it would be important to have um, Spanish uh, as just in case someone needs translation, someone available and actually pay them, not let it be, oh, this is a volunteer that just happens to speak Spanish. It's just so unfair for that community member. They're not hearing what's going on. But if someone is, it's their job to do that for folks that need it, they're available. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's what I'm proposing. Yeah, that's great. And I don't want to speak for anybody's time, but I do know that Chris does have a Spanish speaker on their team, so. Great, and so if that would be amenable to, you know, uh, Earl to that person's time would be compensated for that, I, I think that would be, because it's about equity, right? We don't want to exploit folk and, and their skills, so um, I think it's important to respect that. So anyone else have something <laughs> to say about it, Freke? Thank you. Oh, okay. That all right. Um, so, someone proposed. Uh, I think uh, was it you, Miss Powder? Deborah proposed. We look at dates, possible dates. Oh, Deborah proposed that, and then I could bring that to Earl. Yes. So, are we thinking more at the end of the week or a weekend? What are we? What would be more respectful of particularly um, working folks? And I know work, I work all the time, but you know, there's different types of work in this community. And so I'm trying to think through that. Like the event you held, uh, Philip, and then also the DEI held for the conversation, um, what time of day and what, you know, what day of the week it was held our event we held it on saturday morning and and that worked out well okay thank you and the the conversation was held when we held the conversation the racial healing day in the evening on a it was the 17th so what was that was a Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Okay. All right. So is Saturday morning like a horrible time to have something like that, particularly if we provide like, let's say just coffee and donuts, you know, is that? Yeah, I would lean more towards that. Yeah. So. How do folks feel about that? What do folks think? Allegra, you, you and and Philip, y'all have the kids. <laughs> I can skip gymnastics. <laughs> I mean, Deborah has has of course a young person too, but I'm just trying to think like, okay, the younger ones. Okay. Yeah, I, can do, I mean, if there's I can do Saturday morning and not Saturday afternoon because I know he, had, he has like soccer stuff oh. in the afternoon or mornings I can usually do. Okay. I mean, if there's child care, I could do like a 1030 time. That would be fine. Okay. Philip. Yeah, that works out for me. Okay. So is that a way to, to do hybrid? Because we're talking about some folks who would like to attend, but don't want to be in person. Um, I'll probably be one of those, you know, I mean, COVID is still around. So, you know, is it possible to do it in a building where there is, where people can also access it by, you know? Right, right. 
And, so, and for, you know, and for some elderly folks who have like, you know, medical issues that would go on to get exposed, but they want to listen in. So mm -hmm. it's something. Yeah, we should definitely try to do it like both remote and in person. Right, right. And it can be recorded um, so that we could share it with people uh, later. I mean, you know, there's certainly the technology is there now with the town. Um, I guess, Jennifer, is that something you can check on, perhaps? I mean, I'd be glad to, to check myself, but since you're, you, of course, work for the town, can you check to see if there's a way to, um, just like how town council is, is done now, it's hybrid, um, one of, the, one of the, the town rooms, whether it's at a school, uh, which I know is connected to the the cable um, or another public building. Isn't Bangs is connected as well, isn't it? It's not connected. Bangs doesn't work for hybrid. So the town hall, the town room here at town hall does, and I would assume that one of the schools must be at least, um, like maybe at the library where they do the um, school council no school committee meetings so those are two options okay i i don't know like i'm always iffy about events and having them in the town hall just because some people won't feel like that's ex exactly why we picked the asc for the racial healing day was because it was a neutral place right. um so but right. the schools are pretty neutral at the same time too so yeah we just ha would have to make sure for transportation yeah yeah and I can usually I go through the facilities department at the schools for transportation. Okay. That's who I check in with. So would it be possible uh, for you to check on that for us? So transportation um, and then what school, um, whether it's the gymnasium or the cafeterias, um, would, I guess, allow for something where we could possibly figure out something to do hybrid. I mean, you know, there are like Amherst Media has a television on wheels, like one of these big screens, flat screens that, um, you know, uh, maybe the town has one. I don't know, but there are, this is in the realm of possibility and how you do one of these hybrid type of meetings now. So we could see the um you know the person that's on zoom maybe posing a question and um they could hear and see the speakers you know that type of thing so it maybe would take some coordination i'd be glad to to think through it um amherst media could be a resource for that um so you know i'd, I'd like to try to think through how we could make that happen yeah, so I think that the library at the middle school is, I believe, where they hold the school committee meetings. So m my thought process is that somewhere there that they have the okay. equipment for hybrid. Otherwise, you know, the other way to do hybrid is everybody has a laptop and then we put a laptop at a, at a, at a table where we would have speakers come up and speak. So those are... Um, Right, but then the the audience, the live. Oh, we have audience. screens, though. Okay, we have good. Screens well, to that's be what seen. I want to. Great. All right, so we could figure it out. Sounds like yeah. we could figure it out. All right, and uh, that could potentially help with translation issues because, well, I mean, you would have to have a special Zoom that has the capacity to do like a separate channel, but then it can be more simultaneous to have the you know the translation on a separate channel to people who are logged in with it. Um, yeah. But I, I think that might be like a different subscription that we would need to have for Zoom. Um, yeah, do we have that in the town? Just, just, I just want to interrupt because I'm, pro I'm probably gonna have to leave like as soon as my son comes back from practice. So in like five minutes. So I just wanted to kind of just say the calendar so I can go, cause I know we're getting into the weeds yes, yes. Um, on some of this, but I just want to get the calendar down um, because then like I said, I might have to go. Sure. So, so let's start with next out, month. Yeah, next we, month. Figure out the calendar for next month. 
Yeah. What time are we meeting next month? What day? Do we have date for next month? So I'd, I'd rather I'd rather meet on Wednesday, Wednesday as opposed to Tuesday because Tuesday is when I have to bring him to practice. Okay. So when, um, for our Wednesday meeting. Wednesday the 8th would be back to the second Wednesday of the month. Oh, okay. Would that work for people? I mean, I know that's like a week and no, um, like two weeks away. Would that be okay? February the 8th? <sighs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dee, tell us. No, I'm, it works I'm, for you. I'm just that's a I'm just missing a, a friend's um art talk that uh on Native American uh her work. So um, so do the work for people. Do, what about the, what about the fifteenth? Yeah, the, that's the HRC. HRC. Function. Oh, HRC okay. meeting. So that's that's okay. I mean, I'll I'll just run there. So um, that's fine. Don't worry about me. I'm just like, oh, that's on my calendar. So um, yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we can do last Wednesday of February. That will give us plenty of time. Well, that's Ash Wednesday, if, as long as oh, oh, okay. I'll be out of town. Okay. Or, or I get the, I can also do Mondays. Monday is another time. Tuesday is the only time. I can do Thursday. Can we do Thursday? <laughs> can we do Thursday? It depends In on February. Thursday. Can we do the 16th? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, okay, can, so let's do that. Okay. Breke is like, oh, wait, no. No. Breke, can you do it? That's. Uh, you can't do it, Allegra? No, I forgot. Okay. Um, so the 23rd. Um, well, no, that's that's the week of the a vacation, school vacation week. Oh, I can't do it that week. Okay. And then the um the ninth, did we the ninth so I that can do? So the week of ninth, can we do the Thursday that that week? Yeah, I could do the ninth. Some trust meeting on that Thursday. Oh, you do. Okay. So go back to so, the the Wednesday that everybody could meet, which was the eighth. Don't don't worry about. It. Is that no, are no, you no, sure? No. 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 There, was, there was also the thirteenth, right? The week of the thirteenth. Oh. Could we meet on the thirteenth? That know. Monday. Yeah. Well, isn't there a town council meeting? Town council. I don't uh, want to miss that town council meeting. I like to watch it. So can we meet on the sixth then? If there's one, we huh? The sixth is the Monday before, and if if there's a no, wait, wait, no, wait. I, I, the the Pause. council meets on the sixth, okay, and not so the thirteenth is good. Oh, uh, like oh, so as of is... their posted meeting schedule, like I can't, you know. No, no, no. We cannot meet do on the 13th. Mondays. We cannot do Mondays. We can't do Mondays. No. Yeah, probably better no. to stay away then. Okay. So yeah, we can't do Mondays. Go ahead and do the eighth, please. Let's just if people can meet then, let's just do it. Okay. How, how is Friday for people? I know it's weekend for staff. Friday. Friday. Just only exception, only for this for February. Any Friday? Mm. Let me see. I guess I could do the tenth. Okay. Can people do tenth? It's just an exception. Is that okay, Jennifer? I mean, you guys tell me when we're meeting, and then one of us will be here. So yes. Oh God. Sorry. Fine with me. Okay. Okay. Tenth. We will do Friday very Philip, often. Philip, I didn't hear from you or Freke. Philip. The tenth, yeah, yeah, yes, I will commit yes. to that. I hate Friday <laughs> meetings, but yes. <laughs> and then, what did you say? Is that a yes? We lost Freke. He's oh. not on the screen anymore. Okay. okay. Philip, is that a yes for you? Okay. Uh oh, we lost Freke. Okay, we'll just let him know. Okay, so CSSJC, February 10th, 6 p.m. meeting. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's do March. I shouldn't have said anything about. <laughs> All right. So wait. So March two things. We're we're talking yes. about um the the discussion and should we make that that our meeting because if we're all there it's going to be quorum no no march is when we're supposed to to do the press listening right sessions. that's what i'm saying yeah. Yeah. but yeah. we could post it as an official meeting we probably have to because yes it's all there yes. It's quorum yes yeah i you know yeah. I, I haven't been posting when the full group meets for an event if it's an event where you guys, like when we had the MLK, uh -huh. I don't post a meeting for that. It, you guys aren't making any deliberating and you're not making any decisions. Okay, yeah. but we are. But you're listening. If you want me to post it, I will post yes. it, but. Yeah, I'll probably better it, yeah. to post it because we're probably yeah. going to be talking about it, Jennifer. Yeah. And, you know, right. Ma making some, you know, just making some comments and stuff. We okay. don't want to, yeah, might get a little bit dicey. Right. That's I'd right. Rather, I'd rather err on <laughs> that. <Yeah. laughs> so, if, so a Saturday morning, we have the Saturdays in March are the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th. This is uh, like a weird question, but do we know when whatever UMass? Yeah, so UMass, that's what I was, gonna, I was about to say. Let's stay away from the 11th and the 18th because that's UMass okay. spring break. Okay. It's from the 11th. Well, yeah, 11th through, yeah, the 18th, 19th, whatever, you know, that weekend, 11th and 18th. So let's stay away from that. So it would be the 4th and the 25th. So do we think that the 4th then is the, the Blarney blowout or whatever, because that might um, impact... Cress's availability if there's a number of drunk college students <laughs> roaming around. Honestly, I feel that when the students are gone, might be a good time to, to hold it, actually. You know, I know maybe maybe some of their staff will be gone too, but I feel it will give Yeah, I'll be, I'll be I'll be gone too though. <laughs> oh, okay. I won't be around because okay. I'm doing a trip with the uh, with the students. We're doing community gotcha. service with the students for UMass. Okay. okay. Yeah, the Cambridge students. Yeah. I okay. believe Blonnie Barney blowout is happening the 11th, but I will check with someone to get an actual date. <laughs> <laughs> so let's shoot for first and last uh, Saturday of March. Okay. So why don't we pose those two options to yeah, all and see? Yeah, if either of those work. Um, and you know, Earl might know about the blowout too. Just I, I tend to like to avoid anything Amherst <laughs> during that weekend. But yeah. Yeah. okay, so I we can choose those two as as tentative, and then I'll block them out on my calendar. That's okay. what I want to do. Just block out. <laughs> okay, so, so we yeah, I will pose those two dates. Okay, and so my fourth. All happening, all happening before 12 noon. <laughs> yes, okay. okay. The other one's the 25th, Miss Pat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will check. So like, like a 10, a 10 oh, to yeah. 12 type of event, 10 to 12? Yeah, maybe so. And then uh, okay. people can come in like at nine and start having coffee and donuts and yeah. then everybody settles in for 10 okay. to have a conversation. Okay. I probably have my coffee from my house. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm pick, I'm a picky coffee drinker too. This cat has to be strong. All right. So good. Good. We have that now. Are we meeting uh, during the month of March? I think we no. Uh, do we? I don't know. Well, we, we probably should have a brief meeting just to kind of prep for these listening sessions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can we decide that at the February meeting? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> let's decide that. Then. <laughs> hey, great. Um, so Aligra, don't forget uh, public comment, the second yes. one. Well, and we still haven't talked about the youth center. Right. Yes, I know that. Um, yeah. So wait, hold on one second. Okay. So I don't know where my, oh, there it is, okay. Um, Wait, and so just wait, just so we could wrap that up. So um D, you're gonna follow up with Earl and yes. then Pat, you're following up with Lauren then. Is that yes. how it's okay? Yes. Got it. And, and should I just tell the housing trust 
thinks, but we'll think about something in the fall or, or something? No, 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 no. No, because Christ's program is very related to homelessness. homelessness. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, it's very relevant. Don't. Just tell them about Christ's program. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and does anybody else have anything else to add about listening sessions before we move on? Sorry, folks. So, so I'm just going to say bye right now, okay? Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, yeah, bye. And we're still at quorum even without Freke. Yes. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Before we move on to the youth center, I wanted to double back to Jen because I realized we did not finalize an answer about the email, whether CSSJC can have an email. And I would, I would like to know if that's a yes or no, because I do think kind of to what Miss Pat was saying about Lauren, it brings up issues of equity and like who has contact with us, you know, so if somebody in the community knows us from something else and has one of our contact informations, then they can send us something, but that's, there might be people out there who are interested in engaging, but don't have a way to do so. And I, I feel like that's an issue of equity. Um, so Jennifer, while uh, hopefully you have an answer for that, but um, AHRA has their own email, Engage Amherst. Yeah, mm. that's on the webpage. That's not an email. And I don't, the stuff doesn't go directly to them. Okay, uh, so where does we it We look go? at Engage Amherst. Okay. So how come town council have- Hold okay. up, Ms. Pat. Let's Sorry. So, because I know this came up for uh, Board of Registrars when we were doing um, the redistricting, and that was a temporary committee, and people were trying to get in touch with us about their comments on, you know, the mapping and all of that, and I think the, they concluded for whatever reason, we couldn't have our own. I mean, that's typ the typical practice. I don't see that AHRA has their own email on here. What's, what's Engage Amherst then? Engage Amherst is just a, a, it's like a page and that's something that you guys could think about outside of the CSSJC webpage where people like on the AH, want me to share my? Yes, please. Oh yeah, can you? Okay, can you see the page? Yes. Is it full? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is the Engage Amherst page. And so typically the when the town has different projects and we want community feedback, this is an alternative way to receive feedback. Um, but this email goes to me. So, they don't have their own email in that sense, but they do have different ways that people like notifications of how to get involved and what's going on. Jennifer, who yes. who built this? Was it Brianna Sunrit? Yep, Brianna built it. So is it possible to consult with uh, Brianna on something similar for the CSSJC where um, you know, we could have an informational uh, page where people encourage people to get in touch with us. Uh, if they have, you know, ideas, whatever, feedback, something similar to the HRA. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, if you, you can either one of the, one of the co-chairs can reach out to Brianna and just CC me because she's going to call me into that anyways. Okay. So um and, and, and schedule a meeting that way. Okay. Just because I don't have, I mean, I can do that for you, but I don't have yeah, your schedule. No. So I don't want to have sure. to go back and forth to you with like, you know, different dates. Yeah. But if one of you as co-chairs reach out and say, we're interested in having an Engage Amherst page, you know, right. um, to move forward that way. Right. So I can do that. On our, good. Thank you, Allegra. And she's on our board for Amherst Media. So, um, you know, she's very accessible. 
and she's fantastic. She does a great job yeah. as the communications director. So, so thank you, Allegra, so, for, for doing. I have a quick, a quick comment, Allegra. Thank you for for bringing it up again. I almost, you know, kind of forgot. So for me, um, people who know me very well that I challenge rules and and laws sometimes when it doesn't make sense to me. The town council have, you know, if you want to send information to them, you can send one and everybody gets it. And I know CSWG, we're a temporary group, working group, but it doesn't make sense to me that town council does that for two years, you can send information with one email, everybody gets it, and CS, CSSJC can't do that. So that's what my brain has been telling me like it doesn't make sense. So I'm glad we found this solution to connect with Brianna um, to see if he, you know, she can help us out. I, I do not take no for an answer unless if it makes sense to me. And that's what I teach my kids. I just want to you be know, clear that, that huh? I just want to be clear that Brianna yeah. wouldn't be the person to answer whether or not you can have your own email. That would be the IT director. Brianna can help you oh, with the okay. Gage Amherst page. I just want. Okay. The expectations okay. to be clear there. So, and who is the, you know, I'm happy to reach out to that person. What is her name? His name? He's on her name. Um, I mean, what is it going to take to do that? I mean, yeah. What is it going to take to do that? I just, I don't understand. I, I mean, people, it's, people so, make rules and rules can be amended. That's what we're here for. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. Never. I have a question. Is having an email address, like who's going to be monitoring that? Would that be Allegra or D? Is that going to be Jen? Like, I don't want to have their time taken up because we created an email address. But if we do it in H Amherst and it goes to, let's just say Jen, since she does the HRA, that information is still given to us. That's just my no, thought. No, 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 no. I'm thinking more like I've sent email. I'm sure many people have done that. One email that all the town councilors get like immediately. I don't know whose email is that, but it doesn't have to be monitored by anybody. It is, mon I, it, it is. Oh, okay. So, so the, first, so Lynn the, monitors it. Like she's, oh, she's okay. the one that has to, she's the only one that can respond, but myself, Paul okay. and Angela and Athena all receive every email that gets sent to that all okay to that town council email. So this if okay. if they're gonna give you an email, I can't say that they will or they won't. It's not typical practice, but like you said, rules are meant to be amended. But you're gonna have to have staff on it, right? There's I see. and so part of that is because it the reason why I think from my understanding in the past that not every group has their own email is because a lot of it has to do with when people put out public records requests and um, an open meeting, it just more of public records requests because then they have to find all of the information. So with the CSWG, I okay. also had all of that. So they could just come to my computer and, and get all of the emails that were sent. Problem is if, the CSWG, when they had that one email, they it was going to their own personal email. And so it's a problem when somebody responds, but not everybody else is included in that response. And so I think at some point, because the Human Rights Commission has one, but that's because we have complaint forms that come to us. But I see. But I think that it just seems like it would be easier and cleaner if they limited or didn't have other boards and committees with their own email. So engage Am <clears throat> excuse me engage amherst is um the is an alternative but i i do suggest that you can reach out to i let me let me try to talk to sean uh, one more time again okay. before you reach okay. out to him and then i can okay. just email that result to you guys tomorrow or whenever thank you i guess because i'm a boss i do not you know i i, I make up my own rules as i go <laughs> So we're going to find out, we're going to find <laughs> out, I mean, yeah. engage Amherst, I actually, I like the visibility. Um, and I do think we need something where people can somehow directly um, 
comment or engage with us. So yeah, let's figure it out. Thank and you quickly. Yeah, the, the nice thing Thank about you, Vanessa. Yeah, Thank the, you. the nice thing about engage Amherst is, you know, like whenever there's an event, we use a QR code, right? So people love QR codes. It gets people right to where they need to go. And it's just like, you know, I'm not always the biggest fan of having stuff, you know, because the response is, well, we did it on our website. But again, like if you're not in touch with town local government, you don't know. But I will say that the uh, Engage page does make it a little easier by the fact that you can run QR codes at events. Like if you saw the postcards that AHRA had when they had the listening session with, Gov with McGovern, they just had the QR code to the meeting, right? And so you just got a card, it makes things a lot simpler. Um, it's more I about the distribution. QR. Yeah, yeah. I even use them for some courses, uh, a syllabus, and the students could just bring it up. Um, so I think that's a great idea. Also, if we're leading up to this conversation with Cress, it'd be a great way to uh, spread the word about it. So let's see how quickly we could get something going. So Allegra, you'll check back in with us about that. Yes. And then you guys can also get feedback from the community about new initiatives or new recommendations and stuff like that, because they can, they'll have that portal that it'll, that they can use. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you. Is there something left on the agenda? There is. Yes. Uh, youth center. center. Yes. So do we have word about how that is being handled because I've listened in on GOL and finance committee meetings uh, and it's either not discussed or when it's discussed, it's been um, kind of punted to, you know, well, we have to, to hire or pay for more study. Uh, and then lastly, I think the other conversation was that um, they were going to bring in a YMCA or some other third party to uh, see about creating a, a youth empowerment center, which is not what CSWG had in mind. No. So is there some clarity on this discussion? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have any clarity. I didn't check in with anybody about the Youth Empowerment Center, even though I created the agenda, but let's have it back on the next agenda and then I'll have something for you. Or I can just ask and then email you guys what I find out, whichever you prefer. Um, again, I'm still in the thinking about it being regionalized. So that's where my thought is. Okay, so even, you know, I hear what you're saying. It's not a bad idea, Jennifer, except that part of the CSWG vision and the, and the community vision was to make sure that um, youth of color had not only a safe space, but a, a space in which they in, indeed could feel empowered and have some self-efficacy. So, um, you know, that's part of, uh, community safety, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we want to think about the models of these larger cities and smaller, um, uh, the towns actually paying for uh, lighting at basketball courts at night so that these young people are playing basketball instead of getting into mischief, you know, things like that. <laughs> um, it's part of, you know, it's part of Parks and Rec, yet other things uh, were discussed taking place there, you know, uh, cultural events, um, you know, the, the young people organizing themselves uh, into doing, you know, community uh, types of service. So I think it's, it's something beyond a Parks and Rec type of uh, commitment. Oh, uh, I wasn't saying that it was part of. No, Parks I know you by were regionalizing I, it. No, I I'm know just thinking that the BIPOC kids in Sunderland and the BIPOC kids in Sunderland are are going through things and so could benefit from a space like this, and okay. the their towns could contribute to the success of our. You know, absolutely. we could all succeed from that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So. And we'd have to think through transportation. But anyway, we just yeah. need to find out what's going on with it. So thank you. And thank you. Yeah. Just, I was looking at them. There's a center, uh, I think it's in Lowell. It's UTech. 
Um, oh, and they yeah. Do, yeah, they do like job readiness stuff and yeah, just, you know, that kind of, um, and they do have a component of like, you know, kind of mentoring and, and trying to keep kids from getting into criminal activity or, um, or if they are involved in criminal activity, helping the impacts of that be mitigated through more productive um, opportunities for them. And, and I think they do some really great stuff. They have some of their own like industries going on um, where, so they're learning kind of a, a important skill on entrepreneurship. Um, I was just looking at that the other day and I thought- Yeah, I think, I think what I've observed is that the decision makers have not made youth, youth Empowerment Center and Bicultural BIPOC Center priority in their budget. And so they're trying to go easy way, uh, contract it out to YMCA, for example. I'm just giving an example. Mm -hmm. And that's not what C CSWG had recommended. It's beyond REC. It includes, you know, um, like for example, what you've just described, Allegra. So it's not just hand it over to, you know, recreational department. I know there was some APA fund, you know, that's supposed to study or whatever to so youth program. That's not no, <laughs> you know, um, they're just joking us around. The town council, the school, the um, the finance committee the administration. It's not a priority. Library is priority for them. You know, that needs to be done before anything else. That's the way I say it. Yeah, sounds like- Unless if we keep putting pressure. Yeah, exactly. Jennifer's going to find out some info. Yeah, Jennifer, you have your hand mm -hmm. up. I was just going to say one of the things that I miss from being a youth a lot was the Upward Bound program. So that's another way mm -hmm. to consider things for, yes. for the young. Yes. And I'm like, anytime I asked about what happened to Upward Bound, I'm told that Amherst was not included because we do not qualify for our low income. But then I did, mm -hmm. but that's coming from UMass. So I'm not like, I don't know all the details. So, but then I read somewhere where it is, it's not limited in, in the way of finances. So I don't know how really to start, but that is something that the, it would be great to see um, come back to life because my children could have definitely used it. I, it was, it definitely kept me and a whole host of people out of trouble over the summer. And there was something very empowering about being like 16 and on the UMass campus and like going yes. to your classes oh, yeah. and then going to eat in the cafeteria. So, um, and the memories that I have from there are, you know, very, very positive and they, and they're very alive. So, um, for a lot of kids, it was like their first time there was a Cape Cod trip that they ever went to Cape Cod. So there was just a lot of really um, positives out of the Upward Bound program. And to see it Amherst included in that again, or the Amherst area, that would be wonderful. Right, right. But let's put it in one of our goals, you know, CSSJC to explore and find out why we're being a student. Sure. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Jen. Okay, so where are we now in our agenda? We're it's done. I think we have <laughs> done all of the agenda items. Um, we have our second public comment period. Okay. Um, there are still three attendees. If anyone would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand. Jen, is your hand still up or? Okay. So I'm not seeing any hands from attendees. I think there, well, there was a hand up. Okay. It was my handy. Oh, okay. I'm trying to look through it. All right. Well, then I guess that is it if we don't have any public comments. Thank you for staying, three attendees. <laughs> I did have a question. 
And I don't know if Jennifer or perhaps Dorothy Pam could answer it. I was trying to understand because I think some council committees appointments got changed and it looked like perhaps liaisons were changing too. And I just wanted to verify that our liaisons are still the same or if they have changed who they would be. Um, so Dorothy has her hand up. Hi, Dorothy. Hi. Um, Hi. I'll, I'll avoid myself here. Okay, yes, this I'm allowed to say. Um, the liaisons were changed. Uh, I am still your liaison, and Pat DeAngelis is a liaison to a different committee. Okay, so um, that's that's the, the point on the liaisons. I would love to say something about Upward Bound, because that's where I met Bob, working on Upward Bound. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, how sweet. But I can't do that, so I won't. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. Great. Well, we are glad to still have you as a liaison. And yeah. Uh, Yay. Thank you. Oh. I'll disappear. And it looks like we do have one more person with their hand up for public comment in the public. <laughs> Um, we can't hear you, Jen. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Vera. Hi, can you hear me? This is Vera Cage. No. Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, I have to stop my car. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you for a very um, wonderful meeting. Um, I, I'm, you know, I, when I listen to CSJ, CSSJC meetings and the human rights um, meetings, I feel that that is the heartbeat, the pulse of the community. Um, and, you know, I, I have so many comments, but um, I feel like there needs to be recommendations. Um, I think, I think the, the, the CREST program um, is well situated to to point out the gaps between government and how people are, be, you know, re, um, the gaps in, in social services. Um, and if it is an economic issue that people cannot, you know, access transportation, healthcare, mental health resources, housing, all those things, if, 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 if money is a barrier to receiving these, these services that can, um, you know, um, uplift communities and um, provide economic relief. I think that the town really needs to pay attention um, and and move accordingly with how it it budgets um, and how it, it spends. You know, prioritizes how we spend our money. Um, if there are, you know, if the school is not providing transportation, um, you know, it's it's something that Crest provides transportation, but it's another thing to say, okay, Crest, you can do this like immediate support, but let's talk about the long-term solution because Crest is going to burn out. You know, um, we can't overpromise and underdeliver. We have to be realistic about what we can do, right? And so I think we need to tell, we need to be be part of transforming institutions to better to better provide. And, and be applicable and you know to people's lives. Um, if there's if there's because there are organizations out there, if there aren't resources to refer people to, then we the government, our local government, our local officials, we, you know, all these appointed folks, you all need to come together to to recommend um, things and how we, we change the system, right? Um, to better support families, individuals. Um, I, I, I think that the CSWG was able to get feedback from the community through very targeted focus group um, surveys where the questions were asked by community members who identified with those um, communities, different various communities, and, and, and was able to compile that um, into a format that was you know, um, shared with, with the public. Um, 
So I think that how the government, you know, wants to support people getting vaccinated for COVID and all that, you know, recently they said, oh, everybody's going to get a $75 gift card if you come and, 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 and get vaccinated, right? And so I witnessed myself that the, at the bank center, there was like a line around the building and people like would, didn't have time to wait over an hour you know, just to get vaccinated. But it's that type of incentive. And I'm really pleased that Jennifer um, Moyston is there to speak from, you know, her, her, her place of experience to be, because I know if she, she knows how to get people to, to come out. She knows how to get people to provide feedback. She knows that these certain things that we can easily do to get the surveys and the opinions that we need, you know, um, or that we want to hear. Because, I mean, listening sessions are listening sessions. They're going to attract who they attract. Um, but if we really, we should be really targeting the communities that we want to hear from that aren't coming out to listening sessions, that aren't coming out to Zoom meetings. Like, we can do it because we've done it before. The CSWG has laid you know, um, an example of how that can be done. And if you use the CSW, the, the Crest folks to train them to, to do that type of, you know, um, information collection from people and provide people incentive to participate, um, you, will, you will get the feedback. But I don't think that there's interest in, in coordinating all of that because you know, we, we, we have the people that can, that can help make it happen. We have, you know, you know, the Mary Custards in our community who are, who is an advisor to like a handful of student groups, right? We have, you know, retired Elizabeth Haygood, you know, who has, you know, access to people still living in the community, you know? Um, we have, you know, the family outreach um, in, in, in town. We have, you know, um, Amherst Community Connections. If we wanted to learn about, you know, what people need for food security, for housing stability, for, you know, job economic stuff, like we need to, we have already the people in place, you know, organized already. We just need to be where they are and ask them and, and provide, you know, respect to them to provide their opinion because, you know, they want to know that it will go somewhere meaningful. Um, you know, when I hear about we need transportation to these events, you know, I'm thinking, you know, all this ARPA money, it could help really, you know, provide incentives for residents to create their own business models, right? And, you know, transportation can be an easy one for people to, to get into, and that will help with financial, you know, stability and all that stuff, too. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that the, the town can do to support, you know, the work of social justice. Um, it takes coordination and implementation and support for existing groups and entities. Um, people are there to tell you, you know, like there's there just needs to be coordination, that's all. Um, and so I'll, I'll just leave it at that for now. But, you know, I, I think there's potential and opportunity with Crest folks to think about long-term solutions and transforming our systems and institutions and how we prioritize our, our spending um, to really uplift communities so that we don't burn out, you know, crest responders, but we actually change, you know, how we behave as, as government. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Any other public comments? Okay. So it sounds like that's we a good have way to, that's a good way to end the meeting. I agree. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um so we have our next date, February eighth, the tenth, yes. February tenth. Mm -hmm. And and we, we have potential dates for um a partnership with Cress for a listening session. Yes. And we have various tasks to complete, including you and Miss Pat are going to work on um, about the the child stipe child proposal. Care. Yeah, elder care. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. It is nine thirty-eight, and we're adjourning. Yes. Good night. <laughs>
We don't have to vote. Thank on. you, everybody. All right. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Going to have dinner now. <laughs> <laughs>